Welcome back to After Hours at Blondie's, where we're chatting all about music and artistry, producing, lifestyle, and today in the hot seat, we've got a very special guest. Chris Corkle joins us today. Thank you very the much. The man, myth, legend. The elusive yeah. being that is Chris Corkle. Sometimes elusive. Sometimes, Sometimes, Ten months of the year. Yeah. Ten months of the year, Ten but when he emerges, it's glorious and wonderful. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And we love it. Appreciate it. So <laughs> glad to be here with you both. Yeah. <laughs> so glad to talk yeah. to you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. So let's take it back. Okay. All the way back, because we obviously know and love you for the bubbly, amazing, wonderful, sparkly person that you are, okay. inside and out. Okay. But let's take it back all the way to the first love of music. What do you remember being the moment that you fell in love right. with music? It's a, deep, it's a deep one. For me, my, my biggest core memory revolving around music and the feeling that it gave me, I was maybe four or five years old. And... Mm -hmm. In my living room in Yellowknife, we had in the, like the TV area, we had a couch on one wall and then a couch on the other. But the one smaller couch, there was a little vent behind it. And what I would, so like the couch had to be pushed out a bit. And what I would like mm -hmm. to do is when we were watching movies and stuff, I'd like crawl back there and just kind of like rest on the back. Right. Mm -hmm. So I rem uh, this memory is so vivid in my head. It's mm -hmm. we were watching some movie to this day, have not been able to figure out which one it was. Mm -hmm. But the, the score in it was super orchestra based. And there was this super sad scene at the end where this kid was like floating down the river and like it was like a, you know, PG rated movie. It wasn't like horror film or whatever, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This kid's like floating yeah. down the river. He lost his friend, lost family, whatever it was. And these strings come in. And I remember thinking in my head, like, don't you cry right now? Mm. Because if you do, your brother Richard's going to make fun of you. Yeah. So I was like holding back these tears. But I knew in that moment that it was the strings, that it was the music yeah. that was evoking this emotion. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what piqued my curiosity for it. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like every day since has been trying to find out exactly why mm -hmm. that made me feel the way that it did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm ever going to get that answer. But I think in short form, after long form, mm -hmm. Yeah, that would that would be the the, mm -hmm. the the journey for this. I think it's one of those cliches. The journey is the destination, kind of. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? Because like it's you're you're looking for that thing that doesn't ex like maybe doesn't exist, but yeah. also exists in perpetuity. Totally. You know I mean? mm -hmm. Completely. You can yeah. feel it. You know it's yeah. real. You know it's yeah. there, but you you don't really know why. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's ultimately what what is. It's the feeling that music gives me, but also mm -hmm. the curiosity about wanting to know why it makes you feel mm -hmm. the way that it does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that kind of drives the whole thing because mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy in, in a sense, you know, that we can that some people have the ability to. Hear like not I don't think anybody understands music. Sure, there's music theory. Sure, mm -hmm. there's like all these things and you can write it out and you can have like a master's education in understanding music. Mm -hmm. But at the core of it, it's yeah. like, we don't really know. Like, yeah. And the amount of people that it brings together for an evening, just to all be in unison dancing together, like, it blows my mind. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go too off topic of this question, but like, it yeah. fucking blows my mind. It yeah. Really yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah, yeah, No question is off topic. Cool. No answer okay. is off topic. Okay. Cool. Definitely. Cool. We go yeah. on side tangents all the time. Okay. Yeah. That With, is very cool. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, like, I mean, that's, you know, was that like... You know, a lot of people, when they're that age and something hits them like that, they're like, oh, I want to be that when I grow up. Yeah. Was that kind of where that hit? Or was there like another moment where you were like doing your thing, going through life, go to school, go to work, whatever. And it just clicked in your brain. Like, you know what? This is the aha moment that made me want to do music as a career. So that aha moment came at Chambala. My mm -hmm. first year ever was studying business finance at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend, one of my best friends, Tanu, he called me up one day. I was living in Yellowknife at the time. Mm -hmm. But he was like, we need to go to Shambhala. Mm -hmm. We got to do it. Um, it's going to, you know, it's going to change your life. It's going to be great for us. Had you heard about it before? I had from him and through one yeah, of my other yeah, best yeah. friends in Yellowknife. Yeah. But... What, like having that in my head was two of my great friends saying there's a party called Shambhala. Mm -hmm. And tr from having I hadn't gone to a rave yet, I hadn't gone to really a concert at all. Maybe like, mm -hmm. a, you know, a couple of people playing fiddles and yelling sure, yeah, fiddler yeah. on the roof. Right. Yeah. Which slapped, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely slapped. That's yeah. exciting. But my idea of like when people would say, hey, like there's this cool party that happens in the woods of B.C. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to really picture what it's going to be like mm -hmm. until you're walking on to the grounds of it. Like mm -hmm. you have no idea. No clue. And so throughout that weekend, 
in my mind, it was more so me understanding that like, wait, like you can, you can study and learn how to mix. You can study and learn how to compose music. Um, and I, since I had felt called towards melodies music my entire life, I didn't, it's like, there was no other option. Like I just, it made sense. And I was like, okay, so these people are making a living mm -hmm. off of creating music and playing it live mm -hmm. music that they're making on their laptops, some that are making on other systems. Right. Mm -hmm. But I knew just from through high school producing on my laptop and garage band and, you know, screwing around with little hip hop beats and such. I just knew that it was completely possible. Yeah. And I was like, there's no reason for me not, it, it would have been a, a sin to myself mm -hmm. to not fully kind of hop on yeah. that path. Yeah. And so I'd say Shambhala was the aha moment. Shambhala mm -hmm. was the moment where, where I was like, okay, um, so this is the thing, this is a thing that you can do. And it was still right there in my face. Um, and I mean, there's, there's so much backstory leading up to that moment, of course, right. but to answer your specific question, yeah. definitely my first year at Shambhala, yeah. 100%. Well, give us a little bit of that background then, like, cause mm -hmm. you know, there's no reason why we shouldn't, if it's relevant to the whole like 100%. journey, then yeah, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. So this might be a little bit of a long one, but like, we've got time. <laughs> let's go. That's why we're here. Okay, wait, let me take a little sip. All right. Get sip the water. Everyone porch. have a, have a drink, have a sip. So from your first question that you asked, and I explained that I was sitting on the back of the couch yeah. and this music was hitting me and I didn't want to cry because I didn't want my brother to be like, yeah. you know, um, I don't know if it was that moment that kind of, that, that made me want to focus and expand my musical knowledge, but we had a piano in our house. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was nothing fancy, but it was a piano that worked. Mm -hmm. And, um, from a very young age, right around that time, I, I would sit there and, you know, hit. And I can still remember visualizing in my head, like, just hitting a couple keys with, with like, one finger on each hand. Nothing crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. Just, like, hitting it and then, like, boom. And so my parents saw that I was really enjoying it. And I think they, in their heads, were like, well, let's go. Let's put him in lessons. You know, let's, like, if he enjoys this, put him yeah. in lessons. So yeah. I would love to just, like, fool around on it. And I don't know if it's because they, I don't know if my parents put me in lessons so that I would what I would be playing on the piano was more enjoyable for them to listen right. to while they were yeah. at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they're like, let's help this. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. Help yeah. me help you. It's, help it was you. a mutual, yeah. it was a beneficial agreement, right? Yeah. So I get into to piano lessons mm -hmm. and I fucking hated it. I hated everything about it oh, because I don't know if you know this, but like there's a very, very specific way that's called witch hands mm -hmm. that you have to play piano. Mm. And I understand why it's, yeah. it makes a lot of sense and it's discipline yeah. in the full thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like every time that the term witch hands came out, I was just like, I don't like this. Yeah. I just want to like hold them however I want to hold them. Yeah. Yeah. Then when it came to learning the process of reading music and so on and so forth, I was like, this is like mathematics. It's too and high for you that age. Probably. Yeah. I was just like, yeah. this isn't what I'm here for. Like, this isn't mm -hmm. why I'm, this isn't why I love music. I yeah. love just being at home hitting keys on the piano. And yeah. I, like, I kind of hate the fact that someone is not ruining it for me, but like taking yeah. the fun out of it for me in a sense. For sure. Structuring it so much. Yeah, yeah. And like all yeah. these things. And then and it's like. Maybe not in a way that a kid that young wants to get or can digest. Yeah, yeah. Who wants yeah. Rules 100%. At that age? Yeah. Not me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you, you don't yeah. like the rules, right? Yeah. It's like, and, and I think that there was so much fun to me at least in seeing which little, you know, two finger melodies I could come up with. And then going into lessons, it was more so. It was more so like, yeah, it was like military style. And even though it wasn't, my instructor was very sweet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like super sweet gal. Um, but there was always this, I started to almost like resent mm -hmm. piano in a way, mm -hmm. not at home, but like every time I go for lessons, I would just be counting down the minutes till it was over. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when you're not truly enjoying learning something, it's, you can't digest it's it. It's in yeah. one ear or no. the other. Yeah. You're just like, okay, can I go now? Mm -hmm. And I did learn the basics from reading music. I learned the basics from, you know, all this stuff. Kind of like the basics that I, I guess I needed in a sense. Mm -hmm. But my parents saw that I wasn't really enjoying it too much. And then I switched instructors and it was this guy who was a really cool guy. Mm -hmm. But every time I'd see, he came to my house to, uh, to teach me and every time that he would roll up the driveway, like drive up, I'd be like looking in the window and just fucking bolt. <laughs> and so, yeah, I was just like run and hide. And so it was nice that my parents kind of tuned into that. Yeah. And the deal was that you can stop taking lessons, mm -hmm. but That's you got to continue. 
You know, mm. you got to continue playing, do your thing, right? Okay, learn on your own. They're saying mm. not exactly. Saying they're yeah. not saying you can't touch the piano. No, 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 no. They're like, yeah. yeah, don't like you don't have to do lessons, but do like keep keep, keep doing this, yeah. keep mm-hmm. keep yeah. keep pushing it. Yeah. Um, and so during grade school, you know, I had the comfort of knowing that I was able to like the piano was my safe space, mm-hmm. kind of, you know. And at that age, it's it was more so my like. It consumed me in so many realms because once I figured out that, like, if I press these two keys with this hand while, like, doing some simple little, like, fluctuations of keys with this hand, with the right timing and space in between it, it started to ignite this little thing inside of me. Uh Mm. And I was like, oh, shit, like, this is me just writing songs on my own melodies that I'm not really understanding what I'm playing. But I was like, this makes me feel a certain way. Mm. Uh That's what ultimately you almost found the answer to your first. Yeah. 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 That's right. And, and so as I'm, it it kept on, it was like a a cycle that would keep exciting me and it would Mm. keep boosting my passion for it. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it it almost kind of like was a hindrance to my education in a bit during grade school Mm -hmm. because you just um, wanted to do that. I, I lived very close to, to my elementary school. Mm-hmm. So like it was maybe like you could run it in two minutes or less. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And near, nearing the end of every day when I'd start to lose focus, I would find myself imagining on my desk, like sitting at my desk, imagining the keys in front of me. Mm-hmm. And I would hit certain melodies and try to think of what they might sound like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I, once I nailed something that I thought might sound good, like imagined mm-hmm. this, the melody mm-hmm. in my head. And the imagination of the melody alone was making me feel something. Mm -hmm. And so it was almost like I was playing piano in my head, but I didn't know if what I was imagining would translate. And I would just book it home after school, hop on the piano and be like, okay, what was I doing in my head? And then like, see, figure it out, make it work, do some adjustments. Mm -hmm. And most of the time it was exactly what I was hearing in my head. And so it was almost like while I was at in elementary school, I was just thinking about what kind of cool melodies I could come up with piano. Yeah. yeah. Visualizing and, uh, it and then literally well, going there's, home. There's yeah. a lot of logical yeah. evidence that says that if you know how to practice in your mind mm-hmm. properly, it's literally just as effective as so doing it So many athletes as well. Yeah. If they visualize the experience yeah. that you're about to go through, yeah. 100%. your body will remember and then mm-hmm. produce that. Yeah, the rest faster. count. The yeah. rest in your mind count. They really do. Yeah. They really do. And would you say, would you guys say, this is a personal question, would you say that that is exactly what manifestation is? Maybe? Your bu- you um, it's a very, pressure. I think it's a very specific version of that. Yes. Because yes. like, yeah, a lot of people think of manifestation is like a, like a, like a bigger thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. 100%. You know I mean? But if really yeah. what that is, is it's because the rep, it's, it's again, it's repetitions, practicing towards a goal. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which if you're doing mentally and you're doing physically work together to create the results in reality in reality in this yeah. reality, yeah. In this reality. Yeah. 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 yeah for sure i feel like it's more yeah. of like getting your physical yeah. body and what you want to do and where you want to go 100%. kind of more aligned and yeah, yeah. you're as, what did you call mental reps mental reps yeah. that's a good that's a yeah. nice little yeah. term yeah. Yeah. yeah mental reps yeah you're doing it in your head and, and you were doing it right there on your desk yeah yeah, yeah. and i'd usually have to make a few adjustments yeah. you know and be like okay wait this key is this but i think every single time that i did that and that was day in day out yeah mm-hmm. it eventually made me map out the keyboard or the piano keys in my head mm-hmm. quite accurately mm-hmm. and so a lot of the time growing up before i had my license just if we were on car rides road trips or whatever it was i would always have my hands together like this like in the back seats mm-hmm. and it, i'd be playing it <laughs> these would be different melodies so 10 mm-hmm. keys and i would just be like hitting them against but it was like a constant thing in my head mm-hmm. that i was always trying to like map out mm-hmm. different melodies this is a prodigy mm-hmm. shit right here yeah. like yeah. Do you still do this today <laughs> i do don't you find- i don't do this oh, anymore interesting. and i think the reason that i don't do it is because of logic is because of mm-hmm. ableton is because now you actually mm-hmm. have a database where those thoughts that you have can be in your computer so I, it's yeah. not like i need to remember it as much anymore right but i think since i remembered it so well it's just kind of like a part of me inside, yeah it's always know? been that constant with you as you've been yeah. creating all the way along it's yep. just different forms of expression now different forms of expression yeah there and you know. with that comes so many other things right so because many. like back in the day yeah. playing piano for kids at school or whatever it was it was just like a fun little thing because i knew that i knew piano Mm-hmm. But then it's like hopping into the next scene where, OK, you want to officially start producing music. So you either get Logic, Pro Tools or Ableton. Mm-hmm. And now it's like then it was like a whole other thing because I didn't really want to share. I was it's like a, mm-hmm. I was excited to share the things I was creating at first. Mm-hmm. You know, my mom said they were great. 
But I will yeah. say this: I've never really made anything. My mom said it was bad. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I gotta take that one. Shout out to the moms out there yeah. because Shout out they to the moms. really will encourage you. But you need yeah. that encouragement early on. You need somebody to be totally. in your corner, be supportive, hundred percent. Yeah, and that will just kind of propel you and lead you along, 100%. right? Yeah. So shout yeah. out mom. Shout out moms. <laughs> Linda, you Linda. rock. Okay. Um, Thank you, Linda. We know she's watching. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so yeah, from, from elementary school mapping out the keyboards in my head to that exciting me to go home and be like, Hey, let me see this. I became super obsessive, obsessive with it. Not even in a bad way. The only bad side to it was that you know, at the near the end of the day, it was all I was thinking about. So like, if yeah. I still had a few classes left, I'd just yeah, be your fucking English lessons, oh, your math yeah. lessons. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'd be and, in the um, other room. Yeah. And then, so, so that leads me to grade seven or grade eight, where I entered the heritage fair, right? Did this okay. project mm-hmm. and I, it was, um, my project at least was on, um, was on my great grandpa. who was mm-hmm. in the, uh, the Canadian military. He was what oh, they yeah. called the RAF ferry command. Yeah. And uh, so I did a ton of research on him and I had to do this whole project on, on this whole thing. Right. So I thought, what better way? Cause I was doing a little like presentation. I was like, what mm-hmm. better way to write a song for this? You know, I wanted right. to put my little piano skills to oh, test. Yes. So cool. Yeah. So my mom took me to Radio Shack when Radio Shack was still mm-hmm. a thing. Yeah, Radio Shack, yeah. oh and uh, we picked up this little recorder that just recorded the audio around you. It wasn't like mm-hmm. something you plugged in. It was yeah, yeah. very basic. It was with mm-hmm. a tape, like just like a fucking cassette. little, a little cassette, right? Yeah. Oh was gosh, it with a micro yeah. cassette or a full size? It was a full size cassette. Yeah. 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 It was a micro one. It was like my dude. favorite toy. Yeah, dude. Yeah. You just record fucking yeah. yank out that rope inside if it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, right. so, so we recorded on that and I can, I can still, if I were to hit my fingers like this, I can still like hear it perfectly. Mm-hmm. It's a simple oh. tune, but it was a tune that I really, really enjoyed, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, so I played it and then recorded my voice over top of it. Mm-hmm. And it was like this whole little thing. And so, so I'm pretty sure somewhere in my house in the midst of all like the boxes, it probably still exists. Yeah. But yeah. That was my first time technically recording music. Yeah. And I think oh. inside of me, not knowing at the Seven time, great production. That's mm-hmm. right, dude. Oh, that's cool. right. Yeah. And, uh, and then getting to share that with people and tell them that I created the tune behind it and so on and so forth. That was yeah. my first time of receiving feedback on my music mm-hmm. from people that weren't close to me. That's mm-hmm. right. People yeah, that yeah. were looking at the project. Right, right. Yeah. So I actually, I ended up winning. Yeah. So I win and, the, and I was one of the winners. I don't know if I was first, second or third, but the top three people mm-hmm. uh, were chosen to fly to Montreal to present their stuff there. Mm-hmm. Oh, very cool. So Jeez, yellow knife to, to Montreal. Montreal. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. Battle. We went to the yeah. big leagues. However, yeah. I didn't big go. City. Oh, I didn't oh. go because we had this huge France cycling trip planned for that whole time. Oh, and I was like, there like is you were no cycling chance. across France? Me no. and my family, we went. We You're going to cycle across we, France? We did. This is back then. Yeah. 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 So, Stop, yeah, go. that's okay. right. It was really cool. We went all through the Loire Valley. I don't want to get yeah. too sidetracked yeah, yeah, on this, yeah. but, uh, but so. Uh, <laughs> I'm interested. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, um, you know, fortunately and unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it to that. No regrets, mm-hmm. though. I'm yeah, glad yeah. I went to France and, and not Montreal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No disrespect to Montreal. Nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a different version of Just a different yeah. version. That's different right. Version and history. so yeah. so that would have there been my, yeah, that would have been my first yeah. time really sharing, I guess, my recorded mm-hmm. music with it. And then the second time, which mm-hmm. was like the most nerve wracking thing I've ever done in my life mm-hmm. was I was oh. chosen as a valedictorian <laughs> for my grad class. OK. Oh, and grade eight grad. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So not the yeah. full thing. Yeah, it's great. Okay, great. Right. Okay. <laughs> Still wear it on my uh, wear it on my sleeve. <laughs> yeah. So then I was like, I'm definitely recording a song on the piano, writing mm-hmm. lyrics, and singing it mm-hmm. live to the grad class as like wow. a thank you. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. In my head, leading up to that moment, practicing it at home, all this stuff, mm-hmm. I was up there killing it. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was up there doing right. little, you know, like yeah. dancing around the stage. Yeah. yeah. Had a whole choreographed routine, I'm sure. Literally, yeah. yeah. The full thing. Dance. Dancers come in the back, the doves fly <laughs> out. And, uh, <laughs> like the whole thing. I got a cane yeah. for some reason. <laughs> Much Hot different. Hats. Yeah. Um, okay. Gymnasium. <laughs> Whoa. Right, full of people. Hundreds of people. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And they're like, all right, like next up is Chris Corkle singing you guys a song that he wrote. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, what are you doing? This is about. And uh, I used to yeah. like, I used to blush super easy back then. Uh-huh. So I probably just looked like an absolute tomato. Um, but I sung it. Mm-hmm. Good for you. And, and it was my, that was my first time kind of like performing music live. Yeah. And nice. afterwards, I was like, that was kind of fucking cool. Like, yeah. I liked how I felt after. Yeah. During mm-hmm. it, 
I didn't want anything right, to do with yeah. it. Because I was just and like, was oh, it God. reasonably yeah. well received at the time, just out of curiosity? It, it was, but I, you know, in, in hindsight, if I were, if there was a recording of it, would have been better. I well, it, yeah. I think if there was a recording of it, oh, like right. a video of me actually saying oh, it, right, right. I would go back and say those people were full of shit. <laughs> I don't think right. there was any yes. reality. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, but but it's I could be going home. So uh, it's the question was: Is did they make fun of you for a year after? Well, no, no, no. This was grade eight. Keep in This is my grade eight. So is yeah. that your last yeah. year? Yeah. So you know, oh, and okay, I was just in my school. Eighth grade was the first year of high school. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So, yeah. In yeah, some yeah. elementary yeah, school, yeah. eight is yeah. the last, and yeah. then you go up to, to nine, nine, ten, ten to twelve. Nine. To yeah, 12. yeah, nine, yeah. ten, twelve. I hear right. the, the thing. I think to answer your question, Mason, is mm. I think I kind of dodged that bullet, and I'm so mm. damn glad that I didn't. Yeah. Have another year after that. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have. Yeah, 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 yeah. But hey, you're up there. Yeah. You did it. Did it. Even yeah. in the moment, it yeah. felt really uncomfortable. Like, what were those feelings yeah. that you were kind of? I just. It, it's like so on the spot i'd never been so on the spot yeah. was, and it's like so many people looking at you and then it's like sing yeah sing this song that yeah. you wrote did you even think about the lyrics yeah. you were writing or were you just trying to rhyme i was going right. to just so many <laughs> things in my head being yeah. just like this is not good. yeah <laughs> like, it was it was really stressful but i think in a way Every time that you get super stressed out in life, mm -hmm. it's like these little tests. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. fail miserably, mm -hmm. but just feeling those emotions. Yeah, I makes think it a little easier next time. It does. Mm -hmm. It really does. If it's you don't die in that summer. moment, yeah. you got that experience to go off of. And maybe next time it's going to be a little, a little bit better. The lion didn't eat you. That's, didn't eat me. No, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't hear the, the whispers in the back of the, the <laughs> gym, but you never know. Yeah, yeah. Who that's knows? okay. So like, what is this guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it was, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, uh, so then, so then that was my first time performing. Um, and then in high school, I had a laptop mm -hmm. and I was just like, okay, garage band, like, let's see what we can do. Mm -hmm. So little, I'm just going to work back to throw in another element mm -hmm. is, uh, in grade school, um, my mom bought me a rhyming dictionary. Okay. And uh, she saw your performance in eighth grade or like, she's like, we're going to work on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Summer Summer yeah, this, you yeah. <laughs> totally right. Linda a little bit before that. <laughs> um, but one of my favorite things to do at night was to, was to write rhymes, mm -hmm. you know, and like write, try to really use syllables, mm -hmm. try to like really find words. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever looked in a rhyming dictionary. It's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, I like there's a lot, lot of, no. there's a lot of, there's a lot of, rhymes you know you yeah. just are like oh this there's just so many different things so you could pick mm -hmm. from everything and i just sit there write these little things whether they were poems whether i'd be like kind of wrapping them in my head yeah and were um, they destined for rap and hip-hop and that sort of thing i believe so yeah. because okay. i would be coming out using the cadence in which a rap song or a hip-hop song would be sung mm -hmm. and so then in high school when i had a laptop and access to garage band i was like let's just see what we can do we know that we've been putting our lyrics to use in our head and like mm -hmm. writing these rhymes and stuff mm -hmm. um and then that was the birth of my nickname c corks mm -hmm. which was early on in high school because i just went full rap mode and oh, yeah. was yeah okay. it's just like it just <laughs> dove in yeah. um middle and, of yellow knife well yeah that, yeah precisely yeah, 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 legends. yeah. yeah. and so Amazing. so these so all of all of these things are kind of like stacked on top of each other from yeah. the moment mm -hmm. of like you know hitting the keys on the piano to then like performing and playing piano and then to being like okay let's try to record our voice now in yeah. like a way that actually might sound okay yeah um and so i bought a little what's called a yeti and they still make them to this day it's a usb yeah. microphone there <laughs> it is yeah. the damn devil yeah, get to see you yeah, yeah. <laughs> that probably sound really bad um, <laughs> yeah. and uh and so that's that's crazy literally yeah. this guy so yeah. a, a much more previous version of this guy but sure. mm -hmm. Just have it on my desk and I have my little hip hop beat that I made in garage band and start recording it. And what excited me about that was that when I listened back to it, mm -hmm. I was like, this is kind of fire, you know, I was, yeah. and I couldn't yeah. believe that I was making it. And then I'd share it with friends and my roommate at the time. And I was just like going through it. Um, and I noticed that whoever I showed at the school, mm -hmm. they only had good things to say. Right. Mm -hmm. And that to me was super encouraging mm -hmm. because it made me really excited to create more to get the same reaction out of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by almost craving people telling me that it sounded good, mm -hmm. it really fueled me to keep trying to create more that sounded mm -hmm. good, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then so through through finally like using my voice a lot in high school, um, that took me to first year university which was a little bit of a mess. First year college, I should say. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, okay. A little bit of a messy year, okay? Mm -hmm. 
But didn't drop the music. Still in Yellowknife? No, 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 no. Okay, we're location wise. Yeah. After grade nine, Mm -hmm. we're on Vancouver Island. Excellent. Right. Yeah. So a board, a little boarding school. So Mm -hmm. I'd fly from Yellowknife and then back and forth. Just a wild place. Mm -hmm. Boarding schools, pretty nets. They're exactly what you think they aren't. Right. In a good way. Right. 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 Okay. Fantastic education. A lot of like incredible opportunities. You make a network of friends by the end of the Mm -hmm. year or two. All over the world because it's people mm-hmm. coming in from oh, every country. Point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. at the end of school, at the end of the year, is it's like you know people in this country that you know what I mean. It's yeah. just you yeah. feel like your web has greatly expanded. Yeah, that's, um, that's huge actually when you yeah. think about it. You it know, is. You don't really know how big of a deal that is in the moment. Exactly, right? like, dude. Yeah. yeah, and then you're traveling and you're like, oh, yeah. you're in France. Oh, wow. so and so live here. Da 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 da. Mm-hmm. Um, so so many incredible things about boarding schools, private schools, the full thing. But but it is interesting how our idea of them isn't really mm-hmm. what is. Yeah what you think it is yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. um sorry went on a tangent there so mm-hmm. yeah so you're on the island island yeah. college college University boom yeah. first year wild year you yeah. know and that at the end of that year was when my friend called me and was like hey we got to go to shambhala we got to do it yeah. and uh at the time i it was one of those decisions looking back that like if i had said no to that or if i had made an excuse right. to not to for anything to happen differently and not yeah. go none of the past my entire past 13, 14 years would be I don't think we would be here. We probably literally would not be. This podcast wouldn't exist. (laughs) Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, Yeah. none of us. Thank you for going to Shambhala. We're here. No, that's, that's, that's right. So that kind of takes us to that first aha moment. Yeah, that's amazing. Wow, that's a beautiful journey. Yeah, and and knowing you and some of the, I mean, just fast forwarding a little bit, knowing you and some of the production that I've heard you make, Yes. Not, I've never heard any of these things that we've talked about, but the stuff that I've heard you make and then hearing your background leading up to that, I can see some of that influence. Love it. Mm. You Love know it. what I mean? Okay. Not like, it's not like huge, but it's just like, oh yeah, this is like, you know, I mean, your voice alone, the fact that you've been training it and using it for so long, yeah. Yeah. you and know, rhyming, your voice has a very, yep. um, yeah. yeah polished sound to it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it's like, I a, love it's that. like a, it's like a defined you know, almost, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to say trained, but trained almost. Yeah. Know? Self, self-trained yeah. voice. Self-trained yeah. Voice. yeah. Trained, very yeah. unique and well-developed. Is yeah. Our, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Boy, you guys are <laughs> pumping me up right now. <laughs> it's, it's, we love it. That's yeah, 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 totally. You know? yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's cool that you say that because mm-hmm. it is the human voice is such an interesting instrument mm-hmm. and instrument does not mean you got to be belting out all these notes. Mm-hmm. We have so many inflections in our voice that we don't think about. Yeah. And I think part of that training, that self-training, was finding a way to like replicate certain inflections that add so much emotion mm-hmm. to the way that we speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Definitely. It's kind of Did you ever go yeah. to training for your voice? The only time I've ever been trained was mm-hmm. by an opera singer, uh, an opera singer coach. So a, a person uh-huh. who trains opera singers okay. for a month or two while I was living in Calabasas, just outside of Hollywood in Los Angeles. Calabasas. Yeah. Oh, same, Calabasas. same neighborhood as uh, yeah. Kim Kardashian and all those. Oh, yeah. Those Love yeah. Her. Yeah. <laughs> <Say> <laughs> very, very cool. yeah. 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 No. Um, cool. The only person I ever saw in that area was uh, Kid Rock. But I was oh, so nice. stoked on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> Frenchy from Greece. Oh, okay. Really sweet gal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but let's not sidetrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you did That's the opera great. trainer yeah. yep. training. Trump training. All right. Training. So take us through the next couple of years. Okay. So you're leaving college. You're saying yes to Shambhala. Okay. Where does LA kind of fit in all this? So LA fit in. LA fit in. 2000. Okay. LA fit in a portion was right before mm-hmm. Shambhala. Oh. So there was a period in my life um, when I, it was in first year, that makes sense. No, it was, it was in second year that I was kind of half-assing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I meet this girl and we started dating, so on and so forth. And um, she was studying at UVic at the time. And she said that her dad was a music producer and she was from California and all this stuff. Mm. And um, we started getting into it you know, getting deeper in the relationship, so on and so forth. And she was like, you should come visit my parents. Like, come, come with me when I go back, come hang out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that sounds kind of great. I'd never mm-hmm. been to California before. And I yeah. was like, this is a great chance yeah, to like go yeah. and check it out, yeah, you know? Absolutely. Warm sunshine. So, so I go down and visit them for a few weeks. It was like a two week trip. Mm-hmm. And while we were there, I got a chance to hang out with the parents, so on and so forth. They liked me. And uh, then they brazed the idea of like, 
what if you moved down here mm -hmm. and sung in a band for my, fr this is the father yeah. speaking, the yeah, producer. Yeah. What if you sung in a band for like a rock band, kind of like a screamo band, a metal uh -huh. band, uh -huh. um, that my friend's son is coordinating. And I was okay. like, this sounds cool wow. as fuck. Yeah, I was like, okay. Oh, yeah. Move down to LA okay. and scream for, yeah. for, a, for a rock band. Um, at the time, I had like you know short hair on the sides, but this like mohawk type thing that I would straighten and gel over one eye and like oh, put my head on. So Whoa, so emo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Well, like more so, more so playing the part. Yeah, because yeah. I thought it was a really cool aesthetic. Of yeah, course. yeah. So yeah. I was just like, okay, getting into the early, it. Yeah. Did or the, you need sorry, a lot of training for screamo? Because I always wonder about their voices. I just naturally was able to do this like kind of like, like yeah, just yeah, like yeah, this really yeah. guttural thing that yeah. I always yeah. knew that I could do. Yeah. And so when I was trying out for them, they were like, yeah, there yeah. it is. There <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so, so that was a cool short experience. Um, mm -hmm. We don't have to get too much into that, but, but for that yeah. portion of time, I was working at her dad's studio. Yeah, uh, it was called Bay Seven Studios in Los Angeles. And uh, we had uh, like, you know, the song Island in the Sun by a band named Weezer. Yeah, so I, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so good. Weezer would be coming through there uh, regularly, and I would be the ones. I was like the lunch, not the I lunch mean, guy, but like the food guy. Too, that's like wild. That's to right, be in dude. The same space as them. 2011, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not so, like a big Weezer fan, but like, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's like that. That would have been very cool, especially at your age. It was so cool, dude. Like, mm -hmm. oh my god, going straight from Yellowknife yeah. and a little bit on Vancouver Island to yeah. going down and being like Two that's very fucking small Weezer, town. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And so it was a, a really cool opportunity to um, mm -hmm. to like it was a really cool opportunity just to be there and do it and to feel it out and everything kind of just like fizzled out as sometimes relations of happen course, yeah, when you're yeah. super young. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're um, going to your that's years. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Had things not fizzled out, I, I probably wouldn't have gone to Shambhala because the timing lined up. Right, as I right. got back, and it yeah. was like, boom, I go back to Yellowknife, and then Tanine calls me, and yeah. he's like, yo, we got to go to Shambhala. Uh -huh. And uh, and so it almost felt like the universe was just coordinating the perfect mm -hmm. uh, Shambhala yeah. arrival. Because yeah. you went to school yeah. for finance, right? And then you're like, you know, obviously you're just telling us now, like, yeah. you were just like, ah, not really into it. Yeah. You know, the music is calling you, and she's like, let's go to Cali. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? The music, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So Fair. here we Fair. go. Fair. You know, you know, maybe not the music work that we normally talk about here, but yeah. it's music. Who oh, cares, absolutely. right? So, you know, and then you you go and try that out and you come back and this guy's like, and you're like, well, I don't want to do finance. I want to do music, but this didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the universe. New opportunity. It was yeah. really yeah. just throwing it down at me. Yeah. yeah. For, like it, in a, in a way where looking back on it mm -hmm. it's like oh yeah it was totally fucking like out yeah. of the way um mm -hmm. but at the time it was it, it was just kind of like oh random chance mm -hmm. you know it's like fan like imagine that yeah. imagine yeah. this just yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah you know yeah, yeah. 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 very yeah. cool okay so we're getting into shambhala but it's crazy because that was and we'll get into this further mm -hmm. in the story but that was mm -hmm. the first time that I ended up moving to Los Angeles for mm. music related right, stuff. Yeah. And then we'll cool. get into phase two further down this conversation. Yeah. 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 So, so then Shambhala yeah. hits, you, you, you obviously, you know, we've talked about it on this podcast many times, the amount of like openness and togetherness and love that you yeah. feel yeah. there and the, and the, and the, the, and the creative, music. the creative, yeah. uh, you know, energy is so wild there because you're not only, seeing multiple different versions of really talented people self-expression but you're in nature at the same time yeah you know grounding in nature surrounded by what the world calls art yeah you know, the universe yeah. calls art and then what people call art in a way that's not like an ego thing it's about just giving mm -hmm. and, yeah. and expressing contributing yeah it's very much just expressive yeah. expression that's mm -hmm. all it is take yeah. it take it if you like it don't mm -hmm. take it if you don't like it but whatever yeah that's know, right yeah. that's that's absolutely right i i remember coming home from my first shambhala and explaining it to my dad and yeah. uh he coined the term i don't know if he coined it but in that moment he he mentioned it mm -hmm. and the term was collective individualism and yeah. I, mm -hmm. that always yeah. stuck with me yeah. because yes. it's such a cool way to express what goes on there everyone's just mm -hmm. being themselves mm -hmm. but together mm -hmm. they're being their own damn thing you know mm -hmm. but they're all under the you know like everyone knows that that they can while still being included mm -hmm. yeah because there's, no, yeah, there's no there's no ego there's no judgment yeah at least not in those days anyway yeah, yeah. um and and there's no exclusion you don't go there yeah. and somebody's like sorry you can't sit with us exactly yeah. so so basically then you, you do shambhala 
this changed everything. Mm -hmm. What was the next thing like? Because now you're you're not in school anymore. I assume. Yeah. yeah. By that point. Yeah. I, you're like yeah. no more school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're you're okay. So then like okay, you're what like early twenties right now. I guess yeah. it's like okay. So what are you doing for work? What are you doing? Like, are you starting to get into electronic music? Are you starting to look for right. the next? Whatever, like you so. Know. In, in that time period, I had been working as the uh, copy lead at the Staples in Yellowknife, right? Mm -hmm. And I was fucking <laughs> crushing it. You know, mm -hmm. I was like on top of everything, mm -hmm. doing making little personal projects for my own self while working mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, but it wasn't. It, it's important to say that, like after that aha moment at Chambala, mm -hmm. I called my parents just after the festival, maybe like yeah. two or three days later. Yeah, and I was like, hey guys. <laughs> I think I want to, you know, not go yeah. back to business school yeah. and maybe join a music school. And and their response was pretty much like, get home now. Like, yeah. What do you mean? What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and so it took them a little while to, to warm up to the idea of it. But they mm -hmm. were extremely supportive from the very start. Mm -hmm. That's good. And once they were warmed up through it, um, they then... Being the freaking dopest people that they are, they uh, I found the school that was based out of uh, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Join up!" So I did online starting then. Mm -hmm. mm. Dropped out the the business and started from Yellowknife studying how to produce how to produce electronic music online, mm. and oh. um, I was just kind of like blessed, I guess, to be able to focus on that immediately, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. kind of took all of my attention. Nice. Um, yeah, so that was that was kind of like. As far as like work and such goes, you know, doing little like doing staples, which took yeah. up, a, you know, a, a portion of my time. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then it was then it was straight into like the only thing I would think about, even after the first few lessons of this mm -hmm. electronic school, I was like. I will never do anything else in life. Yeah. I, like mm -hmm. I, I just knew that's it. Yeah. That there, there was no chance. Yeah. Yeah. The feeling of like plugging in some of yeah. the plugins and then having my little MIDI controller yeah. and then recording it. Being able to listen to it, burn it onto a CD, yeah, and then take it for a drive. I was like, "Yeah, this is fucking crazy." That yeah, is man. wild. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. So that 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 consume that was the yeah. beginning of the the consuming me for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't consuming know consuming in a good way or a bad way. Would you say? I, I would say the the greatest way that I could ever That's express. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Keep in mind, there is a level of degeneracy that comes mm -hmm. when you spend sixteen hours on your laptop. Mm -hmm. for sure order some food yeah take a break while you eat go straight yeah. back to it yeah for mm -hmm. like four years in a row yeah <laughs> you know sure. that's yeah. that's i mean that's, you're in your yeah. 20s that's the time to do it you know like exactly yeah exactly yeah i mean i, I will say that after after base coast i kind of did the same thing this year yeah. too and yeah. i'm in yeah. my 30s now but but yeah. i am so thankful for sometimes the degeneracy of it yeah. Mm -hmm. And I say that not in a bad way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like the degeneracy, I just mean that you're completely devoted. You pretty yeah. much cancel out everything else you got yeah. going on, social yeah. plans, taking care of yourself. Yeah. Uh, all these things just kind of get like pushed yeah. aside yeah. so that they the are creative inside. Yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, forth. yeah. So that's kind of like, yeah. 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 That's, you that's, kind of take the good with the bad. Even mm -hmm. Joel West was saying this. You've got a woodshed. As mm -hmm. an artist, you okay. kind of got a woodshed. You got to yeah. go into your yeah. into your place, yeah. into your little haven, and just create and mm -hmm. dedicate yourself to that mm -hmm. art of creating. Hundred percent. You kind of surrender to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So four years go by. So four years, roughly. 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 Yeah. 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 Oh, um, yeah so I'll, well, I'll back it up. So mm -hmm. so 2011 for Shams that whole thing, mm -hmm. which after that spark, it was like, okay, we know that this is what we're, the path we're going to be following. Mm -hmm. um, so start doing the online school. Started producing right away. Like, mm -hmm. was just, it felt so nice to finally have these tools at my fingertips. For sure, mm -hmm. too, yeah. And uh, the great thing about producing in Yellowknife at the time was it was just getting into winter. Mm -hmm. And that means you get like two hours of sunlight, yep. you know, at most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when it's dark and cold all the time, you stay you inside. Just want to stay inside. <laughs> it was perfect. I was like, this yeah. is great. Don't uh, This is really yeah. good. Yeah. And then, so the next year, I knew that I, so the next summer, I knew that I wanted to check out another one. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, if, if Shambhala exists, like there must right. be There's other ones be other out there. One. And so at the end of that summer, I was like, damn, you, you, I was, just, I was pondering and it was a cool mm -hmm. self validation thing where I was like, it wasn't in my wildest dreams that I thought I'd ever be at a venue like the Gorge. Mm -hmm. That I'd sure. listening to music with my friends, mm -hmm. these live acts. It seemed yeah. so so much like a dream. Mm -hmm. And then thinking like, well, you've been to two Shambhalas. Like to me, that was something that I just couldn't wrap my head around. I was mm -hmm. like, you're fucking doing it. You know, yeah. just like you're traveling the lands, going on road trips. Um, and I don't know if either of you have ever been to Yellowknife, but like. I have not. No. I definitely would like to. But you I go to Edmonton. Know. 
going to Edmonton when you're from Yellowknife is like right. going to the fucking <laughs> best city on the planet, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. You're just like, yeah. woo, best Edmonton Mall, dude. Like, yeah. it, it, it's the big city. So to yeah. go big to these vibes. crazy venues and mm-hmm. be listening to bands that I had only ever dreamed about mm-hmm. seeing live, mm-hmm. um, it was a really cool feeling. And then, you know, go back to Yellowknife and get back, put the headphones on mm-hmm. through the winter and just da da da. And I'd, mm-hmm. my routine pretty much during that time was. Um, I've always been an avid skier, but there's yeah. no mountains in Yellowknife, so it's mainly mm-hmm. cross country. Right. And um, so I would wake up at like six in the morning, make a coffee, go downstairs, take a little dab. Sorry, mom and dad. Take a little dab, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, spray a little air freshener, <laughs> and then uh, and, and then I would put the headphones on, have the piano there, have my laptop, and just start going in. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and and as the slow the sun slowly came up, mm-hmm. as soon as it was like up. It's just a sunrise into a sunset. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can comprehend what that looks like, but the sky is yeah. fucking That's nuts. Yeah, for three hours. For three hours, yeah. just gold. Just yeah. like the golden hour. Yeah. Wow. And so during that time is when i take the break, I would bounce it to my phone, right? I'd put it on the phone, have my headphones in, and go for a ski. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like out there skiing it up, and the sun goes down again, and I was like, all right, back to yeah. creation mode. Yeah. And then go ski into my basement and uh, get straight back to it. And so I spent that year. 2012 was a big one for really... I really started believing in my productions in yeah. a way because I was like making all sorts of stuff, uh, which at the time I was like, these are fire. You know, I yeah. look back on some of them now and I'm like, eh. but some of them I look back on and I'm just like, no, this is actually Pretty really good. good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Was it all electronic music? All electronic. Yeah. yeah. I would still be using my voice in some. Um, mm-hmm. Like I remember in 2012, one of the, my, my favorite uses of my voice was making a cover of um, there's a, an old tune, not too old, but like I think it's 90s or early 2000s, definitely 90s. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's that. I will remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will yeah. remember. Yeah. yeah, Sarah McLaughlin, that's right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so I was cre- I wanted to create a cover electronically. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I wish that I had the file for it because it was a really yeah. good tune. It was just me yeah. singing that over like some chill step. It was really, yeah, really cool. Nice. So, really cool. So uh, I remember that was like a big moment in me realizing, like me being like, what you're, cre- I was, I was, excited on what I was creating mm-hmm. once mm-hmm. again. And I was really, it was like a new level. Um, and then leading up to Christmas of 2012, Tanu calls me again. And he's like, this dude, guy. this fucking guy, <laughs> dude, love him to death, yeah. calls me again. And he's like, uh, we got to go down and visit our friend Bailey and her family in Costa Rica. Oh. And I was like, I don't think I can do that, dude. Like, this is a big, you know, Shambhala was a big one. Sasquatch, yeah. you're in the States. That's a big yeah. one. I was like, go to a whole different New continent. Country? Yeah. What? I'd never, <laughs> never done anything yeah. like that. Wild. Yeah. And, um, and so just made it happen and we fly down there just before New Year's and, and the whole vision, this is, well, this was oh. to Costa Rica and we knew that we would oh. go to Envision at some point while down there. we were planning on going for a few months. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. You're yeah. really like going. Yeah. That's yeah, a big yeah. trip. It was a big one yeah. because it was the first time that I had ever traveled like f- to a foreign, like off North mm-hmm. American soil, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. without my parents, mm-hmm. which yeah. to me at the time I was like, this That's is nuts. Yeah. yeah. I was like, this is fucking nuts. Yeah. Um, so we land in Costa Rica, me and Tanu and, um, our family friends pick us up at the airport, so on and so forth. And just like st- stepping foot down, that was another big thing. I think it was like mm-hmm. 21 at the time or something. Mm-hmm. I was just like, damn, this is cool. Like I'm literally in the jungle with my best friend. Mm-hmm. And in a few months, we're going to go and go to this festival in the jungle. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd heard it's kind of like Shambhala, so on and so mm-hmm. forth. Yeah. And so we had other friends from our private school that were coming down at the same time to go to the festival. Mm-hmm. So we merge with them. And there's a group of like five or six of us at this point. And so just to like see everybody with their big backpacks on, their dusty boots, their like cool festival mm-hmm. clothing that they just wore all the time when you're traveling, because mm-hmm. I guess yeah. that's what you do, right? When you're in your 20s and travel. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It just felt so raw and authentic. And I, it was a lot of moments of being like, damn, like now you're really doing it. You know, mm-hmm. you're like doing mm-hmm. things that at one point in time seemed so unrealistic and scared the shit out of you. And now it's like yeah. you're walking down these jungle roads, mm-hmm. going to a music festival with people that you went to high school with. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so... Um, that was constantly it. like pushing the boundaries. Totally, totally. Just like, just like, zone. just little did I know that yeah. bubble was about to fucking pop. So oh, like, really? so boom, we're at this festival. First time that I had stayed up all night, watched the sunrise, mm-hmm. and uh, it was to an artist named Random Rab. Uh, okay. Some people know about him, some people don't, yeah. but he plays very, very like chill music. And so the sun's coming up. He's on the bongos, on the mallets, uh-huh. the full thing. He's singing, and mm-hmm. that was my first sunrise set. Watching it, being like, so this is what. So this is what it's about. Yeah. I was like, so this is what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, there's like some guy doing his like 
building a big bouquet of flowers while this guy played his music, but it was like yeah. on stage and his art performance was like taking all of these tropical flowers and like dancing while making this massive bouquet. And the whole wow. thing, I was just like, this is nuts. Yeah. I was like, are you yes. kidding me? And just thinking about like being back in Yellowknife in the, yeah. you know, yeah. the tundra yeah. and then to be watching this dude meticulously yeah. make this bouquet of tropical flowers. <laughs> while like every, yeah, literally, like, yeah. What? That's right. And, and so, so our trip was coming to an end and everyone was spreading, spreading ways. Um, and there I was flying back to, uh, I flew back to Vancouver and I was living in Victoria mm -hmm. uh, for a brief moment in time, living in Victoria. Mm -hmm. And uh, so while in Victoria, I remember like get, hopping off the flight, coming home and throwing my bag into my apartment. Mm -hmm. And it was before I even like took off the clothes that I'd flown in that this, not sadness, but like this sense of like, don't let this, don't let this feeling fade right now. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. like, but you're back here in your routine, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I knew the routines were coming. This is like yeah. the same day that course, I got back, yeah. just yeah. like threw it down, still closed on. you in Costa Rica for a couple months. Months, yeah. yeah. And so as that, so, so I, before even like having a second to adjust, I go on Google, open my laptop, go on Google and type in, uh, top 10 festivals in the world. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah. <laughs> Brings up this list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't That's type right. the yeah. feeling That's right. die. <laughs> That's right. And, yeah. um, I this was, is what we're talking about. The chasing yeah. the dragon thing. Like this yeah. can sometimes be, take a hold of you. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. 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 No, 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 for sure. Yeah. For sure. And, yeah. and so, and so I'm going, so I search up this list, right. Mm -hmm. And it's like top 10 festivals in the world. And as I'm there, this is 2012. This is 2012. Yeah. Oh mm -hmm. uh, no, this is 20, Maybe early 2015. No, no, no. This is 20. I flew down to Costa Rica. That whole version of the story was yeah. that that took place. That moment of the story took place right. We landed right before New Year's, going into 2013. Right. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah. envision 2013. 2013. Yeah. Fly back. Yeah. Yeah. Search up top 10 festivals in the world, and the third on the list was one called Snow Bombing, and it was oh. based out of Austria. Oh. Mm. And I looked at the date, and I was like. That's in like two weeks. That's, I was like, that's in fucking two weeks. <laughs> All right, so um, back this bag. Yeah, yeah, and and off with the jungle into the snow. Yeah, Why yeah, not? precisely, precisely, <laughs> and and so just by by the right things happening and the right opportunities coming mm -hmm. about, uh, it made sense to mm -hmm. go to Austria, to to sum the journey up because <laughs> to explain the whole thing would take mm -hmm. quite a while. Yeah. From snow bombing, the same group I traveled with yeah. to envision with, yeah. was, mm -hmm. they were like, "Yo, there's this festival called Lightning in a Bottle that we should go to." So you did mm. uh, snow bombing on your own, though. Snow bombing is on my own. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah. So that's not the first so time we, you're going with no friends. Yeah, no exactly. Nothing. So all of us were in the jungle. Yeah. Envision, yeah. fly back to Victoria, yeah. get to my apartment, search it up. Austria, Fuck this real life boom. Shit. I'm going Austria, off. boom. <laughs> Come it. back, yeah. and then uh, a few months later, it was like okay. And the group that had gone to Envision together, mm -hmm. um, they were like, "We need to go to Lightning in a Bottle." Da da da. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also said, "We need to go to Burning Man, mm -hmm. and yeah. we need to go to a festival called Symbiosis," which were all kind yeah. of like one after the other. Yeah. We yeah. have to go to Base Coast and Shambhala. So literally, 2013 <laughs> was when the bubble popped. 2013 right. was yeah. Envision to snow bombing. Yeah. To <laughs> lightning in a bottle, mm -hmm. to which is just outside of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To uh, base coast to Shambhala, to Burning Man, mm -hmm. and then afterwards was Symbiosis. Yeah. So that's seven, and then was we that hit the greatest year that of your life. Is or <laughs> like <laughs> it was fucking. Crazy. Were you exhausted? Music. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, I was so young at the time that I feel oh, like no, there's yeah, this sure. there's this yeah. element of like when you're that excited about what you're doing. Yeah. You're. You, yeah, you're, you know, you're good. So you're just, yeah. you so wake up happy. being like, this is great. Yeah. Even yeah. if you're exhausted, it's yeah. like, this is, this is what you want to do. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that was the, the big, big, big year of, um, music festivals. And so at Burning Man of that year, it's mm -hmm. a crucial piece of the story. Mm -hmm. Um, I was with some of the people at Burning Man that I had been in a vision with and we were all close friends and so on and so forth. And, uh, one of the girls that we were with, she came back to camp one night and she's like, yo, Chris, I met this really cool guy named Jason. And he said that his friend is a talent agent in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's like, you should, so she was like, you should show Jason your music. Mm -hmm. And so they're at camp and I show Jason my music, the guy mm -hmm. that she just met. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's like, dude, you got to come show this to my friend, Alex. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh. so I was, I, or no, he, he was like, you got to come show this to my friend, Alex back in Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. So he's like, after this festival, Come to Los He's Angeles, pretty much yeah. being like, whatever you do have planned, cancel it, cancel it, and yeah. come and show him these tunes. Yeah. At the time, that seemed like kind of a you know an interesting thing mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to do, but I, I was like, when else are you going to get this opportunity? Yeah. Got to take so, it. So yeah. Yeah. Um, Iron's hot. Mm -hmm. So we, I drive back, meet with Alex, and uh, go to his house, mm -hmm. and we, I'm just like sitting in his living room. 
this cool guy that worked for CAA, mm -hmm. uh, who eventually became a great friend of mine. But um, sitting at his house, showing him my tunes, and then he's like, let's go for tacos. So we drive down to the taco place just down the street, and uh, we're talking about it. And he was like, yeah, I'd love to work with you if, if you want. I'm down to take this on as a project. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that, to me, was a really, really cool feeling. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that was the first time where someone that was actually in the industry... I mean, CAA is the of industry course. standard... Tell it us, is, dude. It, it absolutely is. Yeah. And I'll, I'll add in another bit to this to this moment of conversation is that mm -hmm. in that realm of time that I was meeting with Alex, uh, when we were at his place once, he was just like, hey, you ever heard of these guys named Rufus? Uh, and I was like, dude, yeah. randomly, I have. And he was like, I'm thinking about reaching out to them to see if I can manage them. Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely mind boggling to see what he's done with them now. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Probably yeah. the biggest live electronic music act that's out there. One of We're the talking top, yeah, one of top, top yeah. of them. Yeah. She's talking to Rufus DeSoul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. And, and this was at a time where he already had a few artists that he was managing. G. Jones uh, was yeah. like one of the big yeah. ones. Uh, I think he was working with Feed Me at one point in time. Wow. Um, so, cool. so he. I mean, so, in that era, 2013, what is it? Peak. Precisely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, precisely. And so, so at the can time. I, can I? Yeah. Because I've been wanting to ask this question for about yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you were talking 2012, 2013. What kind of music were you producing? So we talked about Chill Step a yeah, little bit, yeah, yeah. you know, like, because we're talking 2012, 2013 is the peak of the dubstep movement. It's yeah. the peak of the uh, Swedish electro house yes. movement. Like, 100%. Like, that is like the at the, the apex of those genres. Mm -hmm. you yes. know? So anyway, go ahead. Mm -hmm. To answer that, uh, you know, I guess those Sarah McLaughlin covers is kind of yeah. what I was creating. Yeah. But but in a more serious note, definitely um, almost like, do you know the Glitch Mob? Mm -hmm. I was really inspired by them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I was making like melodic kind of bassy music that mm -hmm. even listening to it now, you wouldn't really be able yeah, to classify. I, I, I think I know what you're talking about. I used to call yeah. it like dub because it's yeah. not dubstep, but dub was like where you were like, fuck, I can't remember how I explained this, but it was like this super chill like kind of genre where it wasn't house music, yeah. it wasn't deep yeah. house, yeah. it wasn't dubstep, kind of taking yeah. a little bit but it's like it had it one. almost it was experimental, but it didn't sound experimental. Yes. You know, it was yeah. very it was very yeah. melodic and structured, um, but it was like you, it, you couldn't fit it into one of these genres, mm -hmm. but it was very popular as like an underground thing during this time period. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of feel what you're saying. Like, yeah. Like you can understand yeah. the, yeah. the realm of which it yeah. might live. Yeah. In. yeah. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. the early, early, early disclosure was hundred percent. They were UK garage, but they were also this, you yeah. know, and like also, um, I love that you just brought up disclosure because yeah. that's a prime example of it too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. And really Motez and like, um, God, there's so many people I used to listen to that were all in this genre, mm -hmm. this type of genre. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, go ahead. So, so anyway, that's that's what I was just curious about. No, so. yeah, yeah, no, yeah. totally. Um, so, after Alex mm -hmm. being like, "I'd love to Let's, work with you," yeah, yeah, I was just like, "What the fuck is going on right now?" Uh -huh. You know, and I uh, flew back to Yellowknife, and um, there was just to so that it all makes sense. There was a lot of when I was living in Yellowknife, I would go through these phases mm -hmm. of being like. I can't take this anymore. I got to move down south. And then I ended up moving down to Vancouver Island because that's where Tini was living at the time. And like, I knew most people there. Um, and so I'd always like end up for a few months at a time moving back down. Mm -hmm. um, just to kind of like put into perspective, switching from like flying to Yellowknife and flying to, it was like a, mm -hmm. a very, it was a system thing that yeah. was going down. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so flew back to Yellowknife at that point after meeting with Alex. Yeah. And uh, we were in touch by call and by email and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. And he was like, hey, like delete everything that you have on SoundCloud. Delete, like he's pretty much like take it all down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's like, send me all the music that you've made so far. And so I sent him a huge stack of it. And he's like, okay. He's like one song from it. It was called I Believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was just like, this is your sound. This mm -hmm. track here is your sound. Um, you need to make more music like this. Okay. At the time, it was, it was, it's a tough thing when someone tells you to make a specific thing. Yeah, especially Sounds. when you just like the creative yeah. for freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like the witch hands thing, sort of, you know, how I like didn't, you know, it's like someone yeah. being like, okay, creative. But it's all, it was a great test and lesson mm -hmm. to be like, mm -hmm. to try and navigate and direct your creativity, whatever you want to call it. That's the yeah. thing that's making sure. the music. It was an interesting thing. That was my first time being like, okay, so there's like this entity wants this, this friend, human entity, this thing wants you to create something that is crafted, something that mm -hmm. is directed. So it was my first time being like, okay, let's see how this goes. Mm -hmm. um, and so through emails and stuff and uh, phone calls, he, uh, I woke up one morning to an email chain. Okay. And so I read the first part of the chain and it said, uh, hey, buddy, 
I got your, a, a friend at, um, uh, there's a blog called Deep Sounds, ran by EDM.com at the sure. time. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had all these different genres that they'd have the playlist, but the playlists were, they were huge on Spotify, Spotify, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or not, what am I talking about? On SoundCloud. SoundCloud, okay, yeah. So they were huge on SoundCloud at the time. And so the first email thing is like, hey, buddy, I got your, I got, I believe, posted. I had a friend that owed me a favor there, da, da, da. And then the next email thing, mm-hmm. without me even clicking on the link of it being posted, he was like, hey, it's already at 5K, congrats. Like, like these are good numbers. Oh. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, what the fuck? So I clicked the link. It brings me to Deep Sounds, yeah. uh, the, the block. And mm-hmm. there was my track. And at the, when I clicked on it, it was already at 12K. And so wow. like, I was just like, oh, this is cool. cool. Yeah. And yeah. all the comments and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, this is fucking fire. Yeah. Yeah. It was like something that I had always dreamed of happening. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then to actually like go on. And I, it's weird and because I remember a life. few months before that happened, yeah. before I left for, for the whole lightning in a bottle, burning man, that mm. section of it. I remember looking at that blog, mm-hmm. looking at the artist, listening to the tunes and just being like, I want this. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It was like this feeling of being like, I really yeah, want to see my yeah. name there. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I want. I, I was like, it would be so cool to see like one and of my tracks did. on yeah. it. And then it was right there in front yeah. of me. Manifestation. And so over the next, that's right, that's yeah. right. Over over the next few months, um, I just watched the numbers go up, 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 and then almost got to like mm-hmm. ninety thousand. Okay. Wow. And at this point, I'm just like, let's fucking go, Chris. Because yeah. at that point, yeah. pulling numbers on online for music that you're just starting to release yeah. was really tough. Like yeah. it, it's yeah. inflation is gone. Streaming are not what they are today. No, 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 no. It was no, very no, different yeah. back then. It was then. very and different. And 90K, and I, that's a lot. It was a lot. And yeah. for me, every one of those, every one of those mattered. You know, I was just yeah. like, that's fucking 90K. Yeah. I was so excited on it. And mm-hmm. um, so during the, that time, Alex was like, you got to move down to Los Angeles mm-hmm. and I'll get you shows, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And that coincidentally lined up with a time, we haven't even touched on this aspect of my yeah. life, but that was at a time where my older brother Richard wasn't doing the greatest. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was struggling with a lot of, uh, just, he was struggling to put it simply. Yeah. And he's, he's a little older, right? 18 months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 18 months older. And, um, and so he, he was not in a, really not in the best place at the time. And the idea, and I guess to explain that a little bit more, like, mm-hmm. It was a lot for me to comprehend not being in my house. Right. During Which that is time. Why you, and you just getting up and the leaving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. And so yeah. the idea of me packing up and moving to Los Angeles seemed quite Yeah. It didn't it didn't feel um like going to all the festivals, that was okay because I knew that you I would be back. coming back home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I could put in my work and and by putting my work, I mean, you know, like really be attentive to him and mm-hmm. what he was going through. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the idea of packing up my things and just pacing out, yeah. um, it didn't sit right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so in my head, though, I was like, we're only getting plays online. Like, this is good. We can work yeah. this out this way. And uh, over the next... in two different directions. That's right. Almost. That's yeah. absolutely correct. Um, mm-hmm. It it's precisely yeah. mm-hmm. my little dreams of all these things happening. Yeah. are just yeah. like, get down yeah. here, you know, <laughs> getting called back to <laughs> L.A. And more. then my... My morals and my, and my love for my brother um, mm-hmm. was on the other end of that tug rope, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, that's yeah. a lot of decisions to have to make at a young age too. Yeah. Like you for don't sure, really think, like, for sure. Oh my god! And, yeah. and big yeah. and shiny over yeah. here. Yeah, and then like so the person that the you reality. love with all of your heart, mm-hmm. uh, knowing that that they kind of need you in that time. So mm-hmm. I explained that to Alex, and and naturally over the over twenty fourteen and fifteen, um, I saw that. It took it, 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 like what he had asked me to move mm-hmm. down there. That was like a, that's what it would take, you mm-hmm. know? And so, and I totally understand it. Yeah. So communication, we stay in touch as friends, but communication yeah. and energy revolving releasing my music and stuff yeah. just kind of like fizzled per se. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, that didn't fizzle my own creativity. You yeah. Know? I uh, fuck it. I was just, just like, continuing yeah, to create the, music. The opportunity so to like, ride that momentum would have required you yeah, to be fully it was, And it's also a wave, you know. Sometimes yeah. you got to ride the wave and the wave, yeah. you know, it's just when the wave shows up, yeah. sometimes you got to ride yeah, it. Yeah, and, and you know, mm-hmm. it'll end, but another wave eventually. But that's there, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And so, so we'll cut scene there to um, 2015. I was living in Edmonton at the time. Mm-hmm. I had... Uh, Kind of got my foot in the door with the scene there, uh, mm-hmm. the music scene, and at that point I didn't know how to DJ. The sets I, right. the sets be like in my head that I would play would just be off my laptop, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I moved there for just a few months before the new year, and then I remember sitting in my little apartment on the University of Alberta campus, right across from the hospital. And I was like, you know what? It would be really nice to take the music, like get my music knowledge to the next level. So why not go to, why not go to like go to the school I'd studied at in 2011, but mm-hmm. I was like, why not go in person? Mm-hmm. Why not see if I can make it work? So instead of studying online, 
you go down there, you sit in the classroom, you mm-hmm. see what these people can teach you like hands on. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I spoke to the school and they were like, you're going to come down here to learn uh, CDJs. You might as well also learn Ableton. Mm-hmm. Right. And they were like, don't come all the way from Canada just to learn CDJs. Right. Mm-hmm. And that was something that I'm so glad the guy mentioned mm-hmm. because I primarily only used to use Logic for about four or five years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as I got down there, it switched to fully Ableton. I was uh-huh. like, oh, this program is yeah. like everything that yeah. I couldn't do in Logic, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm learning Logic. It's, I'm the, learning fo- it's the Photoshop versus Coral Draw situation. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and was LA more of a bigger move than Edmonton was? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But so Edmonton, all, yeah. you're much closer. Edmonton was just like... Within Canada. Yeah. 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 But, LA so, would have been a big thing. Yeah. LA was yeah. a big thing. And, and yeah. I, I think it's the fact that um, I believe it was like a four or five month course, right? Mm-hmm. And so me to rationalize that in my head, I was like four or five months can do this you know but the the anchor was always that like you come back home right Mm -hmm. so it's like a way for me to emotionally rationalize and i think morally yeah Yeah, because la was like you have to be here and this is your this is it this is your life now yeah yeah yeah. and and so there i was packed up my stuff and uh, flew down to los angeles and my apartment was literally right on right on the fucking hollywood boulevard just Mm -hmm. like up two streets it was like right next to hollywood and vine which is one of the most Mm -hmm. popular intersections there so Pack up my stuff, move down there, get there. Classes start in a few days, yeah. right? And uh, and when I when I arrived, very quickly I saw like, okay, this is great because now I can actively kind of restore my friendship hands on with Alex. Mm-hmm. You know, in a sense that's not Showing trying to reach up by to the craft. One hundred percent, yeah, definitely. Almost like a proving ground in yeah, a sense, yeah. but in a very natural way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was at I was at a Secret Santa dinner at his house that year. Mm. And, uh, my mom had knit, my mom had knit this like spirit hood, mm-hmm. then oh. sent me off with it. Mm-hmm. Christmas themed. That's right. Yeah. So that was my contribution. Well, no, no, not Christmas themed, but it was okay. just, the, but that was my contribution for Secret Santa. Okay. That was yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember if she, get, if she made it for me and then I, I gifted it. That was yeah. my contribution, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. Um, shout out Linda. <laughs> that's right. Shout out Linda. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so I'm at the Secret Santa and everyone's exchanging gifts and then uh, we're all sitting around the table and Alex stands up and he's like, uh, everybody quiet down. Uh, I have a gift that I want to give to Ulu. And that was my production name at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, how would you like to play a set at Lightning in a Bottle Festival? And I was just like, oh, shit, this is coincidentally lining up with me learning mm-hmm. CDJs, with me learning Ableton, yeah. the full thing, right? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, yep, like absolutely I'll play Lightning in a Bottle yeah. Festival yeah. this year. Yeah. What an experience. Um, what an experience that is. That's right. Yeah. So Lightning in a Bottle rolls around. Um, my parents fly down. Tanu flies down. And uh, it was kind of surreal to mm-hmm. be just there doing it you know Mm -hmm. and to like plug in my computer have my midi keyboard with me at that time i wasn't confident Mm -hmm. with cdj so i was like this is great i'll just rip ableton live i'll rip my piano play live over launching these things yeah um which is cool too that's like a yeah it's a whole other thing it's a whole other thing but it it was you know it's not not the industry standard sure it's a performance it's It's a little dj experience that you're going for that's right in different elements of instrument and yeah still super cool but the 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 thing about that is that i didn't want to i wanted to play an all original set okay right okay did i know about mixing and mastering at the time absolutely not right so i had all these songs that in my headphones sounded good right um and i had Probably at that point, hundreds of songs to choose from, from like beginning yeah. to make music in 2011 till yeah. that point in time. Yeah. I was just sifting through so much material. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I put together 60 minutes of it and blended it all in this really cool way. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. Sometimes I listen back to it. But when I listen back to it, I also realize like the amount that I've progressed since then, understanding uh-huh. that the mixing and black spec, yeah, mm. dude, yeah. mixing and mastering play the biggest element yeah. in all big, of it. For yeah. big speakers, it makes such a big difference. It That's does. Experience. It does. Yeah. yeah. And when you're playing different. on those function ones, or you're playing on PK sound, it's mm-hmm. like you, you best be getting some mm-hmm. sort of mixing and mastering yeah. done to your music. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. playing lightning in a bottle was the next aha moment. Um, because I was, you know, when you see your name, on the festival schedule and the mm-hmm. lineup for the day and stuff, it hits you in this way where it was, it's so yeah. manifested. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? You just like yeah. there it is. Like that's yeah. it. And, yeah. and so playing that, having that performance, have my parents there, having to knew there um, for so many reasons, it was incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just, I wanted more, you know, I wanted to keep mm-hmm. that. That was one of my yeah. moments where I was like, okay, time to get back to work, time to make a ton more material. Going. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so that was 2016 that I did that. And then um, 
shortly after that. And I really felt like the ball rolling, like just mm-hmm. like I was like, ooh, riding the festival high, mm-hmm. being like, just played your first big festival, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And then shortly after that, my brother was really not doing well at all. Like, not at all. Um, and it was it was November of that year. So Lightning in a Bottle, I believe, happened in May. And then November of that year was when declined into complete uh, and utter darkness mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. So, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, so everything that I, then I fell off yeah. right. the rockers. That yeah. was, it seemed like 2011 to 2016 that uh, it was building this, like building my arsenal mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and everything just seemed to line up perfectly. Yeah. Musically, I had the space and time to create. I could dive into it. I was feeling it going to all these different festivals, like really feeling it. And then 2016 November came and I didn't touch a keyboard for yeah. a, a long time, mm-hmm. a long, long time. Um, and I mean, this is kind of steering the conversation into a different realm. I don't know what kind it's of what direction you guys want to yeah, go, but you, you don't, don't think about that. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so for all the viewers out there, um, that are listening right now, my, and in the future, yeah. um, my beautiful brother, Richard, uh, November of that year through struggling with many, many, many different, uh, different things. He passed away in Vancouver. And, um, and when that happened, it's like I completely lost any sense of enjoyment from music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The idea of even creating it, mm. the idea of even like being in a headspace to like, it was like, it got deleted. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like, did you associate there. you trying to focus on that as not being there for him? Sorry. Re- reword that. Yeah. Like, did you, did, did you associate like when you were away to LA mm. and all these places and then, and then he declined and all that stuff. Did you have guilt uh, because of that oh absolutely like, okay. yeah mm-hmm. even though i knew yeah. deep down that it had nothing to, absolutely yeah, nothing to do of with course it. yeah yeah but when when you wake up every day mm-hmm. and wonder if a family member is gonna die mm-hmm. it if you're not physically there mm-hmm. you feel guilt yeah mm-hmm. yeah absolutely if you spend a weekend away yeah having the thought in your head that you might this get the person call. might, yeah, you might mm-hmm. get a call, a knock on the door. It's a, such a weird thing, you know, mm-hmm. it's such a weird thing. It's an, it's unlike any other feeling like, because you, you just, there's no way to really put it into perspective. Yeah, you know? Again, like, you're, you're being torn. Like, yeah, you've got these dreams, you've got the yeah. stuff you're working towards. And then this other thing that's just like the on the other side here. Com- that's not congruent the to that polarity is yeah. insane the contrast There's, is just yeah. nuts yeah. you know not, neither of these things can ever come together exist in the yeah. same yeah. world yeah. Yeah. yeah and um and yeah so 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 to answer your question def- definitely mm-hmm. it, it which is probably why you were like oh this music fuck yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah it was extremely tough to um to commit to yeah. any any reality any direction that didn't involve me feeling like I had some sense of uh, being able to give help to Mm -hmm. him and be there for Mm -hmm. him and Mm -hmm. so on and so forth. That shit ain't easy, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But, but yeah, it's, it's, it's all a, it's, it's a, it's a weird thing when, when I look at it, I feel like when I was four or five years old sitting on that couch, um, listening to those strings hit me and being like, Whoa, like this is crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and knowing that I wanted to, that something about the music was affecting me and then Mm -hmm. all through grade school and like getting a chance to perform and then, and then going into high school and, and making beats and then finally going to Shambhala and, and seeing it firsthand and being like, Whoa, this is fucking nuts. And then traveling to different continents, some by myself, some not, Mm -hmm. um, getting these opportunities. It it all felt like it was this big buildup to have such a cruel, end you mm-hmm. know in at mm-hmm. least at that point in time that's what I looked at it yeah, as yeah yeah because it was the first moment in my entire life where I didn't feel connected to the music yeah where, I, where yeah. it wasn't something where I'd wake up I wasn't hitting the yeah. desk thinking Suddenly about notes feeling is wasn't gone. tapping my fingers thinking about the piano like mm-hmm. it's just music was no longer something that even slightly entertained me in mm-hmm. any sense and I felt like when my brother passed it was at that point in time I felt like the snip to my creativity and everything was just 
done, you know. And so how long did that last? About two years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Almost two years, man. Two years, two years of... To about 2018, 19 ish. 2018. I think yeah. just, just before, yeah, it was like two years just before mm-hmm. the two year mark. Mm-hmm. And um, so, what got, what, what was, I mean, we don't have to delve into that yeah. two years because it's yeah. probably a dark time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, delve into it. I'm an open book. And, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we could talk about that off air. Let's, you know, yeah. I think that's, you know, mm-hmm. maybe a bit too personal. Mm-hmm. But what was the thing that got, or what were the things that got you out of that back into your pursuit of these things? You know, yeah. was it, was it yeah. one thing? Was it a series of things? Was it just time? It was, it was, well, there, there's two, two things mm-hmm. that I know for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, seeing how strong my dad was through it, mm-hmm. that over time really like, that was a huge help. Cause I was like, if he's doing it mm-hmm. and this is his son, mm-hmm. I was like, if he's able to wake up every day and like, be there for me and my mom who also are suffering. Yeah, completely. Mm -hmm. Um, that gave me a lot of faith because Mm -hmm. it made me realize like, like seeing how strong he was through it. I was just like, okay, Mm -hmm. well I can at least try to be that strong, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so collectively through that two year period of complete darkness, his strength combined with one morning waking up and it literally felt, it literally felt as though, an angel just came down in the middle of the night and like ding a little like fairy dust, whatever Mm -hmm. it was. Cause I remember waking up and instantly I wanted to make music again. And I felt that creative thing just like fucking burning inside. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Just complete abstinence from it. Um, to like go and make that coffee again and then mm-hmm. run downstairs, put on my headphones and open up a, like, and feel that excitement. That was fucking Pull off a few more dust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Siri, literally, yeah, yeah. literally <laughs> though. Yeah. Get up uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah. and, and that morning I'll remember for the rest of my life because I, I, I knew that, that it wasn't dead and that mm-hmm. it just needed some time to rest, I think. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. 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 So that's that. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but that little, little thing in the night, mm-hmm. that little thing that came down. Mm-hmm. Um, can't explain it. Can't, can't explain it, it but, yeah. but it, uh, it could have even, you know, maybe been Richard just mm-hmm. being like, he's like, I've had yeah. enough of you doing this. It's boring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's you like, know, Oh yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. he's yeah. like, okay. You fed my yeah. ego. Yeah. I realize <laughs> you're sad. Yeah. 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 He's work, like, get little. out no. and do it. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. precisely it. I think, you know, and, um, it's important to take that time but then to, when you feel that feeling of I'm ready to start again, I really commend you on acting upon it too. Go, and not yeah, pushing sure. it down and letting it stay Yeah, don't let stagnant. that guilt, like, push yeah. it back down. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. totally yeah. right. Because you could do that. I mean, I've, yeah. I've done that in situations before. Yeah. And Absolutely. When I was Working. younger, you know, you just, there's something about, like, wallowing in that depression and yeah. that guilt that just For feels sure. like the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Because you owe it to whatever, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and it's not. It's not the right thing to do at all. But no. you know, you just don't. You don't learn that until you learn it. Yeah, yeah until you, you feel you, it. You and don't then take learn action. it until yeah. You don't you, know yeah, until you know. You don't know until you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fair. Yeah, it's it's precisely yeah. precisely it. I think mm-hmm. you yeah. know. Yeah. So so that's yeah. You guys you guys set up set it best mm-hmm. right there. I think. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, life is crazy like that. You know you 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 go through things and and. Sometimes they take pieces away from you, but mm-hmm. I think at our core are the gifts that we have and the things that we love and what we're passionate about. Um, the things that make us us will kind of always be there no matter how much pain yeah. is buried under, you of know, course. they'll come out shining in yeah. some way. And, yeah. uh, I think yeah. the universe, the universe has a plan for your, you, you need to bring your music to the world as much as you are. Yeah. And if people who know Chris, you're going to know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> yeah. As much as you want to hide it. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Know, the like all it's, elusive. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, you know, yeah. his sense of perfectionism is mm. so frustrating yeah. as a perfectionist. Yeah. It's super critical for me to say that, yes. yeah. but it's yeah. like, you hear his tracks, you are like, why aren't you headlining a festival right yeah. now? And you're yeah. like, oh, but it's not ready yet. Yeah, it's <laughs> soon. It's soon. not ready Two yet. Two years later. Yeah. Soon. Yeah, soon. Two years later. Yeah. Soon. soon. It's coming. Just it's like, late. Ah, you know yeah. what? I'm going to do it tomorrow. You know what? Screw that. We're the going to play day. and yeah. we're going to go in a completely different direction yeah. now. Oh, oh, which kind of, I guess, you. you know, which kind of, yeah. I guess, leads us to, you know, where we're at today. 100%. You know, I mean, I guess over the last... You know, from that moment, the Tinkerbell moment, whatever yeah. you want to call it, yeah. to 
to when we met, which is about maybe a year and a half after that. Yeah. Yeah. What was, so, so that's like, you know, you, you were living in Edmonton, you were living on the Island. Like yeah. when did you, you, cause you started to move to, you moved to Harrison or whatever. Mm-hmm. Is that with your family? That was with the fam. Yeah. Yeah. Was with and, the folks. yeah. And, and when, and, and when you did that, so where are you at at this stage? You know? So, okay. So we'll, we'll snap it from where we just ended off, which yeah. is like, Tinker you know, Bell. the little Tinkerbell comes in, yeah. whatever it was, uh, boom, restored. That was still in Yellowknife. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. um, and so it was the, it was May of 2020 mm-hmm. that my parents and I was like, just like right after, mm-hmm. after COVID came in, mm-hmm. we were like, it's time to move. Mm-hmm. It's time to get out of here and it's time to time to go down yeah. to Harrison. The, the recent, big city of yeah, Harrison. My, my parents, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, to another, another big metropolis. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's right. And so the reason that we decided to move to Harrison was because my mom grew up there and mm-hmm. uh, we always would go on little summer trips. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we always just had such a, there's a lot of good memories there. Right. Mm-hmm. And so my parents, um, they had spent a long time designing their place there. And uh, okay, yeah. tried and true through trying to figure out building permits and everything. They finally got it, done it, did it. Uh, mm-hmm. And then we all packed up. Middle of COVID. You know, moving in the middle of COVID. Mm-hmm. That was an experience. Mm-hmm. When you don't know if when you fill up gas, if you're not wearing rubber gloves, yeah. like you might die. Yeah. You know, like, everything yeah. about it was just like, why? Yeah. Because it at that point, scary. there yeah, was no, no information. No information yeah. There was point. nothing. There was just the like. The world's in complete lockdown. There's no information. Everybody yeah. thinks they're going to die if they yeah. touch a doorknob. You would like, hear all yeah. these wild, these wild things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not really know. So, so moving during that time was, was pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, this is actually a, a quite an interesting and fun timeline because mm-hmm. when I got down when we all got down to Harrison mm-hmm. it's still right in the middle of COVID mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. I, yeah I'm just trying to think of like what to I guess we're allowed to say whatever we want on mm-hmm. here of so um it had been almost what was it that was 2020 it was about almost a full year mm-hmm. where the only people that I interacted with mm-hmm. were my parents and my uncle who lives down the street Mm-hmm. And so to spend a year, even though I was used to isolation and Yellowknife mm-hmm. and stuff, mm-hmm. at least I still had my friends up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But moving to a whole new place. Yeah. And not even being allowed to meet people. Almost. Exactly. Oh. And no one having sense. any intention of meeting anybody new. Yeah. 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 Um, it got kind of tough. It was, mm-hmm. you know, at first I was like, okay, this is great. The only thing I cared about was that we had each other. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, we got a, I got my parents here. We're all mm-hmm. hanging out. This is great. You know, a lot of good moments in that isolation, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it's freaking movie night every night. Mm-hmm. We're having dinners all the time, you know, like yeah. beautiful mm-hmm. times. You're also at an age where you really appreciate your parents a hundred times more oh. than you ever did. Oh yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cause there is that switch where yeah. you're just like, Oh my God, you start feeling yeah. guilty. You're like, people have literally done every single thing for me. And yeah. I'm only where I am because yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, and so almost a year went by. And uh, mm-hmm. during that time, me and my dad would be mountain biking uh, through the forest roads around Harrison. We'd be taking the boat out. Um, mm-hmm. I had a paddleboard there, so they'd be in the kayaks. I'd be paddleboarding. And um, I found out about White Claws, okay? Mm-hmm. And so I'd heard about a lot about White Claws, but mm-hmm. I was like, let me try these for myself. The weather's getting nice again. I think it was like the mm-hmm. end of April or May. And uh, I was feeling like kind of depressed at the time. I guess actually. I mean, it it's makes sense. I mean, you're still you're yeah. still slightly well, grieving. I hadn't yeah. really the seen world any is shut humans. down. Yeah. It's an existential crisis. That's right. I mean, being depressed was kind of the norm. I I remember yeah. waking up and cracking. I remember waking up at like six a.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, one morning, and mm-hmm. and I just had a terrible sleep. I wasn't being too kind to myself, mm-hmm. and I went onto my front patio, and the the street was dead quiet, right? Mm-hmm. And I crack this white claw. Super, six a.m. Six a.m. Which is a little spritz, yeah. alcohol, alcohol yeah. spritzer. Yeah, everybody yeah. knows what. Yeah, white claws. Like they're not. Yeah, no. 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 It's, a, it's a little a little alcohol. A couple years is the most popular drink in the world, but anyway. In Vancouver, yeah. I digress. Yeah, yeah. And and I so yeah. so so anyway. dead yeah. of morning, right? Just like yeah. complete silence. Except for this, I never, <laughs> dude. I had to, I, when I cracked it, it echoed off like every host there, yeah. and it like came back to me. It was, what the sh-? Yeah, and I remember sipping it, uh, and and I acknowledged in that moment, mm-hmm. I was like, "What are you doing?" Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, "Are you doing this because you're unhappy mm-hmm. and you're trying to prove something to yourself mm-hmm. that like that because you're unhappy, you're gonna try and make yourself more unhappy?" Like, it, it's, yeah. it's so weird how the mind yeah. works sometimes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And um, so anyways, later that day, sun was, you know, sun was out, heat was out. And I was just like, you know what? I got to go for a paddleboard. Okay. So I grabbed some more white claws, get my little bag ready, a couple doobies, the full thing. Uh, bait fully charged. Mm -hmm. And I important. take out the paddleboard. That Very important. Very yeah. important. <laughs> Crucial piece. So putting the paddleboard in Harrison Lake and moat paddling. And my favorite thing to do at that time was just to like get out a decent distance mm -hmm. and then just lie down. Sip mm -hmm. a white claw, mm -hmm. you know, like just hang out there. Harrison and it felt like it's beautiful. It's so nice. So yeah. peaceful. It's it is so gorgeous nice. there. Yeah. It's so, so nice. Silence. And I would just, I would just lie down on my paddleboard and the water would be completely still. And I'd just be like looking at the sky. And those mm -hmm. moments were so peaceful, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm, I'm lying there and, and I hear electronic music mm -hmm. in the distance. And I was just like, hmm, you know, like mm -hmm. my ears peaked and I was like, mm -hmm. whoa, someone out there has a very similar taste in electronic music that mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time in almost a year mm -hmm. that you haven't I, seen anybody. That's right. Yeah. That. I've just been in isolation. And I was like, Wait, I need all, to, yeah, that's right. I was like, hello. Yeah. I needed yeah. to find out where it was coming from. Mm -hmm. So I'm like scanning the shore and I kind of look where the music's coming from. And I see this girl in a pink jacket, pink jeans, pink hair, just dancing by herself. And she had a boombox mm -hmm. with her. And I was just like, <laughs> like paddling up I was like oh my god this is like it was, at that point it was like a unicorn I was like she's listening to good music she has yeah. cool Dusty, style you're yeah, there, that's, that's yeah. Right. yeah and so so really keep in mind that like this is after not interacting with any humans my age mm -hmm. or even more so yeah. in my scene at all yeah mm -hmm. see this girl on the shore paddle up behind and I can't remember how I got her attention, but somehow, and she turned around and she started laughing. She was like, whoa, like I didn't realize someone was watching me. <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh -huh. Started having a simple conversation. And she was like, um, she was like, yeah, there's all these, um, there's all these raves that happen around here and hope. Um, mm -hmm. She's like, let me take your socials. And when the next one happens, I'll send you the info. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it was like, a depression paddleboard that mm -hmm. led into me being like, whoa, there's forest raves that happen around yeah, here. Right. Yeah. And so a few days later, she reached out to me on Instagram. She was like, Hey, here's the link. Um, how it works. Show me how it works. She's like, you know, you e transfer this email and then the coordinates get mm -hmm. dropped the day of the event. Mm -hmm. So I go back to go back home and I'm like running inside to my parents and I'm just like, yo, like I just met this cool girl by yeah. the water and she pretty much gave me these coordinates. She's going to send me these coordinates for this place out in the middle of nowhere. They were like, there's no chance. Yeah, yeah. You're just <laughs> going into the middle yeah. of nowhere with no service. Yeah. My mom oh my was gosh. like, you're definitely going to get skinned alive. Like my mom just thought of the word. She was like, it's definitely a cult. She was like, you, you do not know this person. this movie before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Many times, yeah. many times. Yeah, maybe movie nights every night were not yeah. a good idea. <laughs> that's right. Hey, yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so saying that, um, you know, I, I really had to ease my parents mm -hmm. into it and mm -hmm. be like, because you're living with them. You want to respect their totally, wishes. Completely, yeah. It's like I want to, you know, and, and we're also best friends. So I yeah. wanted to be like very transparent and stuff. And I think they could just tell that I wanted to go. They, you know, they could just, they were just like, eh, see if he's probably going to, you know, he's probably going to do it. Yeah. Uh, so they wished me well. And that is when I uh, pulled up. It was just inside of Whistler. Mm. Uh, and that's where I first met the Vantech crew. Yes. And it was a Vantech crew. I met uh, Pal and Mick right away. And, um, instantly just hit it off i told them that i was super thankful to be there i brought my little all-in-one mixer with me in the back of my car <laughs> um so on and so forth brought my usbs and uh so going from a year of isolation mm -hmm. not really like dancing not being you know like just not being with people of your kind mm -hmm. and like what you're passionate about and so on and so forth um it it was so crazy to go for that paddleboard get these coordinates and then instantly be in the middle of nowhere in the forest with a speaker set up and all these humans start showing up mm -hmm. that are like right in my age right mm -hmm. in festival group you know what i mean i was like what i was like how yeah i was the and the people, energy i was just like okay like a little here bit we of are. Here, a little sprinkle a little yeah festival there that's right the that's absolutely right cars they start yeah. setting up tents and, and it was so surreal to me because it was all What's those things that on? you're explaining it's like people setting up yeah. tents and the cars pulling up and the music yeah. playing it those things those people triggers that you're like speakers. we're about to have a really good time yeah, yeah. and so so yeah, so we, we so the uh, world didn't end. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so it second. starts. Yeah, so it started. Were you guys uh, here all along. Yeah, <laughs> that's <What>? right. <laughs> and uh, so so that was a cool moment because there at that festival, uh, 
the pal was just like, hey, on the very last day, he's like, yo, if you want to throw down a set, like, you know, hop on. We had one yeah. DJ back out. Mm. Uh, so then got to play for the people. And um, one of the organizers of the next rave was there at the at that point in time. Oh. Mm-hmm. And it was a rave called Deep Forest 2.0. Deep Forest 2.0. Yeah. So that there was the a naming creativity. Yeah, that's right, hey. <laughs> on point. Yeah. And, uh, Branding. Uh, it was a, we'll yeah, a yeah. That's later. right. That's <laughs> right. And uh, and so I. Uh, and what th- crew was that? That was the White Rabbit Crew. White oh, Rabbit Crew, yes. yes. And so, so Vanta Crew, White Rabbit Crew, yeah. there's a lot of these crews that are still out and still, about. Still out and about, yeah. thriving. And still the, going the, to the, These guys, like, you don't think about it at the time but mm. post covid mm-hmm. their impact to the scene is huge astronomical. immense astronomical yeah. yeah so it's these insane. are the origins yeah. these, these, these these people are legends in, in, in vancouver yeah. now yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know if you think about 15 20 years from now if vancouver ever turns into something yeah. that is like a big deal yes mm-hmm. the roots will be tied to what happened in covid with these crews Vantech, 100%. 100%. Uh, white rabbit 100%. all those guys Festival, you know like bring the people you know together. sound what was it what, what's it called um Social sound, mm-hmm. yep. uh, initiative, initiative like all the, the ALA, all these yeah. so many, yeah. so so mm-hmm. many Legends. people. Yeah. And so uh, no, no, no. You're you're absolutely right, and I love that because even when you listed off all the collectives there, yeah. it like really puts into perspective. Totally. The yes. uh, like uniqueness of Vancouver, uh-huh. like that which is Vancouver's racing. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. there's so many players in the game. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. So and shout out before, to all of those before, communities before nope. that. Crickets. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe one or Little two shirts. people doing things once in a while. Mm-hmm. You know, that was if there was a, one silver lining with COVID was that it showed the resilience of, of the human race, mm-hmm. you know, to to push through what society was was pushing down on people and carve out their own niche. You know, take the initiative, 100%. not to coin a phrase here. <laughs> okay. Take the initiative, yeah. you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, and, sure. and, yeah. And, and And just, you know what? Break out of the mold. Break yeah. out of the rules. Yeah. Do your own thing. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, White yeah. Rabbit Crew. Dude, I, I love party. that. Yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it so much. Um, yeah. Big shout out to all those, yeah. those communities. Big, um, and, and, and anybody we missed, apologize. Just as valid. Just yeah, as you. You're included. I, I, yeah. Honestly, you got nothing but... I shit on everything. If you if you watch me, <laughs> you know I shit on everything. I got nothing yeah. but mad, mad respect and love for all of those people. You have changed the world for us here. So yep. anyway, go 100%. ahead. 100%. Yeah. 100%, dude. Right. Um, so there, meet... So at, at the mm-hmm. Vantic one, mm-hmm. heard about that one. Yeah, White Rabbit. Show up there, yeah. then you hear about the next. And the next one that I'd heard about... Can't remember the name of it, but it was uh, thrown by the initiatives, mm-hmm. and that was the first time that I met Henry C. and JD, mm-hmm. and uh, and Henry C.'s beautiful partner. Um, mm-hmm. So those three were like, was that I, revival or no? That was yeah, because I think revival was a year that, after that. That was the new. Oh, it might have been. Yeah, it was the first. It was like the first or second revival that they okay. threw. Okay, that's not where we met though. We met, I, I think, think so. it's the second. We met at Zonkaloid, dude. Did we? By Zillalai, we met down by the pond. Oh yeah! yeah remember I, t- I, told you I thought that was. I thought revival was first. Rev- oh, did we meet? Because you were okay. in your white pants. Yes, hundred percent. No, one hundred percent. It was revival. And then right yeah. after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we just met, but we didn't <laughs> yeah. meet. You know? Yeah, yeah. It was just like a, 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 a acknowledgement of yeah. person of yeah. you. Yeah, like yeah. We had like small talk on that little pond. Yeah. Um, which was a cr- that, those two festivals were great, dude. Yeah. That was so much fun. Yeah. And so meet Henry, meet JD, the full crew. Um. And then it's it, it seemed like in the summer of 2021, there were two or three raves happening mm-hmm. every single weekend, being thrown mm-hmm. by a different collective. And since I was based out of Harrison at the time, mm-hmm. and they'd all be thrown somewhere in the Fraser Valley, mm-hmm. it like some weekends I would be, you know, going to the first half of the day at mm-hmm. one, and then right. drive over to the other one. Yeah, and mm-hmm. you know where they are; they're the, that far. The, yeah. yeah, that's right. The mission yeah. pretty much was to finally dance again, uh, meet a ton of new people, and uh, try to meet like just try to see how far this web really goes because mm-hmm. it was all under the radar if i had not gone for that paddleboard i wouldn't have gone to a single one that's of those no. crazy I, because it a was depression so paddleboard well hidden. Yep. that's so yep. underground yep. it was still <laughs> yeah. oh, who's this girl the unicorn her name is sarah she's an awesome human being um, i don't know if i mean Shout it's a million sarahs but it's not somebody that's in the scene i guess like she she goes to uh I see her once every, say, few months uh-huh. now. Mm. Um, shout out, Sarah. Yeah. And she she yeah, really true. is the only reason that I found out about that's everything. That's yeah. amazing. So um, really, really awesome human being. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, so 
that whole summer was just kind of like this because that was the ending. The times were, you know, times well, were people kind of started to back like, you know, what, screw this. We're doing it. You know, yep. it was still kind of locked down or whatever, but yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And, um, and then it was through meeting everybody. Then the mm-hmm. events were obviously in the city and mm-hmm. things were becoming allowed again. Mm-hmm. Um, and by that time I had just, uh, yeah, well, actually, it's crazy because the same event that I met Henry and JD at was the same place that I met Silva at. Mm-hmm. Silva's one of my best friends. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's crazy to, because Henry's one of my best friends now, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. in that process. So you're doing, you, you, you met all those, all these collectives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now you're in the scene. You've met us. You've met all the people that, you know, that are these players in the scene. You're coming out of the COVID life. So now, okay, so now... You're starting to produce again. What have you? Where are we at with that? Because we're at gooey, dude. You know, yeah, we're, we're at, at gooey. gooey. Yeah. We're at no, fucking no, gooey, dude. Go. You know, so yeah. Oh so so the whole another part that I missed about being in isolation is that one of my best friends became having a home gym set up. Mm-hmm. Went to Canadian Tire, the best eighty bucks I've ever spent in my life. Mm-hmm. Okay, eighty bucks, little fucking dip bars, mm-hmm. little mat, little yoga mat, and yeah. uh, and some push-up pads, yeah. cool little pull-up thing. Yeah. It was so easy for me to make music in the daytime. And then once that time, it would either be like, okay, I'm going for a mountain bike with my dad. Mm -hmm. I'm taking the boat out, going for a paddle, whatever it is. And then pump in my room. Mm -hmm. And I made this little Mm -hmm. circuit. So at the Mm -hmm. time, I was was really pushing my boundaries with physical fitness. and I was feeling more fit than I'd ever felt in my entire yeah. life, right? Yeah, you were you were the Greek model, in dude. This scene at that <laughs> Thank time. you. I appreciate the. Uh, I, I appreciate. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, so in that time, it also affected my music in a way because I started um, like while while I'd be working out in my room, mm-hmm. I'd usually have a techno or a side trance mix playing. Mm-hmm. The benefits of having fat like music with a high BPM while working mm-hmm. out are insane it gives you energy it does it, it does 100 yeah. percent. and so i'd be um i'd be listening to these these techno or side trance tunes and in my childhood like sometimes lyrics would just like from the rhyming days the rhyming dictionary days sometimes words would just come into my head mm-hmm. and the syllable use of them i would try to like map out to make yeah. into fun little rhyme schemes that worked and so i'm there and I have my, my whole room is lit up by red lights. Whenever I'd work out, I'd set them to red. Yeah. There's something about it. It felt yeah, like yeah. it was adding mm-hmm. to the pump. It's mm-hmm. primal. It was primal, dude. Yeah. And so yeah. pumping it under the red lights and listening to this techno mix. And, uh, and I hear these, these lyrics come into my head that were, Suck me like a mint while you fuck me like a freak in the bathroom on the sink with a gag between your teeth. And when I thought, when I heard that in my head, I was like, okay, settle so, down. Yeah, you know? relax, <laughs> yeah, relax, relax a little bit. I know, we've been seeing And I was, yeah, and, <laughs> and, and, and I was just like, and I was thinking, well, this is, this was yeah. after the, the first rave, okay? Yeah, yeah. So like, like pumping it, go to the first rave, come back, pump it again, techno things on. Mm-hmm. And I hear these vocals come in. And so I open up my notepad and I write this down. And I knew that after my workout, I was going to record those vocals uh-huh. and try to do something with them. Mm. Right. And that was kind of the birth of GUI. Because once I recorded those vocals and put a simple house beat underneath, mm-hmm. I started getting all these other like rhyme schemes. And I was trying to like yeah. write more lyrics to it. And so that was the birth of a kind of a new phase in my music where I was really streamlining it with my voice. And mm-hmm. then putting like my, my, what I'd learned so far about making house music and so on and so yeah. forth. And mm-hmm. um and it was crazy because showing up at Deep Forest 2 with that on my, uh, Ooh, <laughs> like with that on my fucking iPod. Oh, wow. well, well, it was yeah. crazy because when I was still in Yellowknife for the last days, yeah. there's a whole, there's so many things to talk about, but yeah. pretty much, yeah. I used to go on Twitch a lot Yeah. because I was an avid World of Warcraft player during COVID. Mm-hmm. My dad, me and my dad would go on and just fucking crush, okay? During COVID, still in Yellowknife, it's like yeah. there was only one thing we were doing, yeah. and that was ripping yeah. classic World of Warcraft, right? Yeah. Mm. And so, <laughs> so in uh, in Orgrimmar one day, for all those viewers, <laughs> if, if none of you play World of Warcraft or have ever played it, there's the, one of the main cities on the Horde faction is is called Orgrimmar, and I'm sitting there one day, and this guy comes up and messages me, and he's like, "Yo, you want to join my guild?" And I was just like, "Yup, like sign me up. You seem like a cool guy. I had a cool name. It was Ghost with an X for the O." And I was just like, Ooh, "This dude's <laughs> hard, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, little troll I'll warrior." Call you yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I was just <laughs> like, let's go. Um, and so me and my dad joined the guild. And um, and anyways, just so happened to be um, 
the man, the guy who manages Truth Dubstep, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. who's a Truth is a massive. Those two yep. guys are a massive mm-hmm. player in the dubstep game. Yeah, um, and they're a Shambhala classic too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. so instantly we start talking about music, so on and so forth, all this stuff. And, uh, and everyone else in the guild were all producers and musicians, so on and so forth. Uh-huh. What? Wow. And so it was just really Jesus, cool. The and the universe then, is just dude, you life on it was, It's crazy. From Orgrimmar yeah. with the yeah. little troll warrior comes up Jesus. and he's like, yo, dude, check this out. And it's so, funny, to, yeah. sorry to segue, no, no, it's like, you, for me, I think about video games as like a, a, a escape from productivity, mm-hmm. mm. but there's so many connections that people make playing games online. 100%. Like yeah. even when I was playing PUBG for a little bit, there's like so many friends that were like in the music scene that I was yeah. talking to like all, all across the world, Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and I was just, it's like. You, you just, just have to do know. it right, you know? You yeah. have to just do it right. But anyway, yeah. go ahead. There has to be balance. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not saying that I had balance at all times. Yeah. Right yeah. But yeah. Uh, so anyway, so so meet this guild and one of the players in the yeah. guild, his name is Stoshu. Um, him and I are great friends now yeah. in, in the real world. Yeah. And um, he one day he messaged me uh, and he's like, Hey, for the raid tonight, because how World of yeah. Warcraft yeah. works yeah. is you yeah, have forty fully grown adults at that point. Have to be organized on fucking headsets. Yeah. Um, and we do these raids called uh, called no cam, no loot, where it's like, it, it meant like you had to go on, on camera too, <laughs> or else you didn't get loot. And it was uh-huh. so funny, like the concept of 40 fully grown adults yeah. playing this 20 year old video game yeah. and being required to go on cam to like see their gamer layer and everything and see them on camera. It was uh-huh. just the most ridiculous thing. Yeah. But my friend Soshi was just like, for Raid tonight, um, you should check out this streamer uh, on Twitch. I'll send you the link. Mm-hmm. And he sent me the link to Pika's stream. Mm-hmm. <gasps> And so in the Yellowknife days, uh, we're tuning in and it just so happened that every night we would raid on Tuesdays and Thursdays and every night that we'd raid, she'd be playing. So Pika became our guild's raid music Uh because she'd be playing all night Yeah, and we'd be tuning in, so on and so forth. And she goes all over the map. like (laughs) All over the map. Yeah. Yeah. And so she was kind of looked at as like this, um, this like musical God, raid God mm-hmm. in our, in our guild yeah, because yeah. it was just like so cool. everyone would be tuned in. She is in. a mythical and yeah, that's right. Yeah. And we'd be yeah. and she used to play World of Warcraft too, which is really cool. Oh wow, um, yeah, okay, cool. yeah a little yeah. unknown fact. And yeah. uh, so anyway, so so we'd be you know doing all this stuff, and um, we'd be really into her stream, and it was just kind mm-hmm. of like what the guild would do on raid nights. We'd all <laughs> tune in, and then so on and so forth. Um, cut scene. You know, yeah. I'm pumping into my room, um, writing these lyrics, make the song, go to Deep Forest. And it's like three in the afternoon and I'm walking around the festival grounds and no one's on the dance floor, but I look Mm. at the stage and I'm like, no fucking chance. I was like, that's Pika. She's right here in the flesh. I was like, what is going on? Did you know where she was located beforehand? I knew that she was from Vancouver, but I had, I didn't have any expectation that I would run into her in the middle of the The forest. The chances of this raid god. Literally just being there. And then I was like, what? So I literally sprint back to my car, (laughs) put on my new kicks, put on my, the gold tights. Like just like, I was like, oh my God. I was like, I need to go down there dance. Um, and so, and so she was down. Down. And there. her and her then partner at the time were playing. Yeah. And, um, and so she's, she's playing and I'm just on the dance floor. It's maybe me, me and like a few other people. And I couldn't believe it in my head. I yeah. was like, no chance that yeah. like the, yeah. the musical raid God is right here in the forest <laughs> yeah, in front yeah. of me playing yeah. some tunes. Yeah. Um, and so afterwards when they got her and her partner got off, I went and introduced myself and told them yeah. like how the much they how affected. Much, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she thought that was really cool. And then she yeah. invited me to join them back at their camp. And I got back to the camp and I was like, yeah, I produce music as well. Let me show you something I made last weekend, which was gooey. Uh-huh. And she yeah. was just like, this is fucking cool. Yeah. She was yeah. like, send this to me. I'll definitely play it on my stream. Yeah. Yeah. And her saying that, hit such a bone in my body because I was yeah. like, whoa, like, you, like, the one all my only, friends yeah, are yeah, I was just like, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that was, that was yeah. really, really cool to make that personal yeah. connection. And then uh, over time, you know, now I look yeah. at, at Sarah as a good friend too. And so yeah. it's just cool to, um, it's, life is crazy. It's you crazy. Know? crazy. Yeah. Is this one of these moments that you're having like all the way along, you yeah. get there and you're like, wow, I can't believe I'm here. Yes. I'm doing yeah. it. Right place, it's right in time. the flesh. Yeah. It's you're just here. Things, I'm here. Yeah. I'm playing gooey. Yeah. Right. It's just like, what in the oh, world yes. is going on? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's weird how the whole story feels like a right place, right time kind of thing. Very much. But, yeah. Very but much not, so. I wasn't, cha- I wasn't, it's not like I was consciously chasing it. Maybe yeah. it's. Subconsciously, well, you were building and things happened. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the whole if you build it, they will come. That's kind of like, yeah, that's a good and, and, and you, from what I've been hearing, 
for the most part, when the opportunity knocked, you yeah. didn't ignore it. Yeah. yeah. And that's why yes. it keeps feeding itself. Mm-hmm. Yes, 100%. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, the thing is, yeah. you kept putting in the work. Yeah. You're creating music all the time mm-hmm. so that in this opportunity, you meet Sarah. Yes. And then you have, you have a song. Show. Yeah. Doesn't that sound nuts? If you didn't have isn't, that song, then that, what happens, that's a right? Good, that's a really good it's, aspect it's to think you about. You kept putting in the work so that when these opportunities happened, yeah. you were ready. Mm-hmm. That's a really good yeah. way to look so, at it. So, I will always you know, say this. You have yeah. talent. Yeah. People can have so much talent, yeah. but if you don't put in the hard yes. work yeah. and put yeah. your nose to yeah. the grindstone yeah. and Do put the those stuff. hours in, those the, uh, yeah, years yeah, in yeah, of just yeah. holding up and putting that to paper. Yeah, it's a lot of sacrifices. The, ma- the marriage mm-hmm. of those two wouldn't have led you to yes. right here. Yeah. Yes, you that's know? so true, Leah. Yeah. Very, very well said. Let's yeah. fast forward to kind of the moment when you decided to create the music that you're playing in your new EP now, mm-hmm. because, because, because I've known you for that whole period of time now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And it's like, yeah. you know, we were like, how did, how did we get there? Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. just like, yeah. you know, we were doing this and we were listening to that and we were vibing with this. And then one day Chris goes off the radar and comes back and is like, Drum and bass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. And yeah. I love hearing yeah. that from you yeah. guys' perspective yeah. because yeah. I see it. I yeah. see how it's totally like it kind of, yeah. kind of disappeared. Yeah. Came back. And uh, and and it was a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So after that 2021 summer, yeah. um, I meet uh, my th- my then partner, yeah. you know, like my, yeah. my I meet my new partner. Yeah. And um, we're spending a ton of time together. And at that point, I was still making a ton of house music. Um, mm-hmm. but I remember being at her place one night and, um, these songs were amazing by the way. Thank you. You will never, nobody will ever hear them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll never release yeah, them. Yeah. never release any of it. Um, it's a shame because it's like, oh yeah, when can I, where can I download that? No, you can't. no, you can't. No. You never will. No, yeah. uh, you, you will. You will. On <laughs> yeah. November 17th, lock that in because it's been released. 100%. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah. And, and so, so I'm at her place one night and she was FaceTiming, um, a friend, mm-hmm. uh, who you guys know very well, uh, mm-hmm. Dana, yep. Zeta. Zeta. So she's on FaceTime with Zeta and uh, I'm like, I'm playing my music in the background just on my keyboard, like fucking mm-hmm. around with these little plucks, like mm-hmm. playing this melody and Zeta chimed in mm-hmm. and she was like, Chris, she was like, that would make a really good drum and bass intro. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hmm. hmm. So I take the BPM from 125 and I put it down to 87. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Drag it down, plug in my headphones. I'm like, all right, I'll see you guys later. Yeah. <laughs> and literally, yeah. that I was did. it. Ten songs later, dude. I, I switched cool. strictly to drum and bass because, yeah. uh, and it was weird. Because if she had never said that and I'd never turned yeah. that BPM down, yeah. I don't think I ever would have yeah, yeah. dove into drum totally. and bass. It was totally. crazy. Yeah. So by her yeah. being like, just on FaceTime. you don't know, listen to that. Like, yeah, at the time. Was, at the time I, was, like, I was just like, all house, all techno, like yeah. four to the floor. Yeah. And um, so to, to instantly get that gratification when I turned it down to 87 BPM and playing the plugs. And she was right. Like she in was a massive so way. fucking right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then so I had that on loop and I started adding in different elements and I was like, damn, like this song is sounding nice and beautiful <laughs> and I can, yeah. and I really felt like I was able to, uh, have a banger, but also put my, my emotions in it. And I want to touch mm-hmm. base on that for a second yeah, is please. that I feel mm-hmm. like with electronic music, like there's so much, the bass tones are what we dance to, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That, that thump, that like really aggressive masculine, mm-hmm. that like, yeah. The masculine is the best way I can describe it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the majority of my life, the music that has made me want to cry, the strings, the orchestra, mm-hmm. it's very feminine energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so my whole life I would be like the music that made my music me mm-hmm. was pulling from the feminine energy, the feminine mm-hmm. side, because it was very pretty and very mm-hmm. like heart wrenching and kind of mm-hmm. like, you know, you want to cry or it makes you feel happy or beautiful, whatever it is. And so then it was like trying to, I felt like drum and bass was the first time that I saw Oh hey, I can put this fem- put these feminine melodies in, but that the beat of it, the, the masculine, masculine side, was beat. balancing it out, yes. and I could mm-hmm. then finally express like the pretty. Mm-hmm. I never wanted to sacrifice the pretty mm-hmm. for the for the oomph. I'll mm-hmm. say it like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then being able to, I very quickly was just like, whoa, like okay, you get the beat that, and then these little plugs, these little beautiful plugs, mm-hmm. and I was like, damn, Dana, like thank you, yeah. like yeah. this is great. And uh, I don't think anybody saw me except for my partner at the time for the next like six months or yeah. seven months. But yeah. when I did see people again, yeah. people were like, where the fuck have you been? I've been like, wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Just let me show you this. Yeah. Let me show you this. Don't get too mad. Yeah. Um, and, and so that was my first, that was like the big, the big switch. And mm. uh, at that moment in time, I realized that um, I, I, it was the first moment in my life where I felt like my true, I was able to finally 
the sound in my head, mm-hmm. I was able to convert it into a real thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because with producing music, you begin with the sound in your head. Mm-hmm. And at the beginning of the journey, mm-hmm. what you get out, what you put out, like from the computer, yeah. is not what right. you're hearing in your yeah. head. You know, yeah. Yeah. it takes time to learn it all and yeah. figure out the techniques and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so the drum and bass project was huge. Um, and, and, I just felt like it was my first time being able to truly achieve a feeling that I wanted to achieve for mm-hmm. so long. Mm-hmm. Um, and that year, later that year, uh, I got in the studio with Bryn. Shout out Northern House Studios. Yeah. Fucking yeah. Uh, friend, one of the friend best of the guys pod, alive. Friend of the pod. Yeah. Ooh, I mean, all yeah, these people yeah. are friends of the pod. <laughs> <laughs> We've had Zayn All these people are friends of the pod. Yeah. 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 No, We're going yeah. to have Pika on. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. All the homies. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Massive shout out to Bryn. Yeah. That, uh, mm-hmm. I love you to death, Bryn. Mm-hmm. And... Um, um, I sat down for, for mixing it all down with him. Mm-hmm. It was 10 tracks and, uh, and he gave me so much inspiration with it. But yeah. once we had that all mixed and mastered and sitting right, um, I was at Bass Coast and uh, that summer and I was sitting at, or standing at Slay Bay, the bar at mm-hmm. Slay Bay stage. Mm-hmm. And uh, I see this cool looking dude with dreadlocks. I'd seen him around the Vancouver scene before. Um, and I introduced myself and we just had this really natural conversation for maybe an hour and a half. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out Chase. Chase is, is one of the people mm-hmm. that uh, he was the one that was like, hey, this is Jared, Jeremy, Chris, Chris, me, Jared. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we had this really natural conversation. And uh, when I was back in the city after Base Coast, I was moving out of my apartment at the time. And I get this message from, from Jared. And he was like, hey, dude, like, nice to meet you. Base Coast, uh, I'm throwing a little rooftop party if you want to stop by. Mm. I was like, perfect. Finished packing up, drive over. I was just about to drive back out to Harrison. Um, and... Yeah. And so I, I go in and he's like, what do you, what do you do? Like, what is, what do you do for work? What do you, what, mm-hmm. what are you all about? And I was like, I produce music, da, da, da. And he was just like, send it to me, you know, I produce music uh, and don't show it to anybody. And I don't show it to anyone. <laughs> yeah. So he said, send it to me. And uh, the rest was history. You know, I woke yeah. up to a couple of voice notes the next morning. He's like, Hey, just listen to it. Uh, he's like, let me know when you, when, if you want help with this and, and mm-hmm. I'll help you like get the yeah. vision together and do it all. So mm-hmm. massive shout out to Jarrett. Cause mm-hmm. he has, uh, I think in life you really, for a create if you're if you're creative Mm -hmm. you can create and you can make all of these cool beautiful interesting things Mm -hmm. but if you if you aren't capable or don't have someone who knows what's up to get it out of you when it comes to branding yourself on social media sure actually sticking to it making sure that every like that there's a there's some cohesive vision to Mm -hmm. what you're trying to convey yeah um you know i wouldn't have been able to really do any of that without Jarrett. so over over time Mm Jarrett uh just really like yeah, he, he made it, he brought it all to the surface out of here, which mm. is one of the hardest fucking things to do. So you're difficult. like, is the brand blue? Is it pink? I'm like, it's yeah. both. And then you're yeah. like, okay, what does this look like? You just, because yeah. having, it's when you're trying to, as you both of you guys know, when you're trying to start and be like, what do I want the viewer to see when they mm. listen to my music, when they watch my stream, when mm. they see my photos, like what makes you, you in a unique sense? Mm-hmm. Um, so then... We got down to it, um, and he he really liked what he was hearing. And then uh, he was like, "We got to film some music videos." So mm-hmm. uh, fly down to Tulum, fly mm-hmm. down to Playa, stayed with mm-hmm. him, and he just masterminded getting a team of people together to uh, make it all happen. Um, and so yeah, it was, it was there was something really uh, really interesting. But that's how the the drum and bass. From like its inception yeah. to from Dana being yeah. on FaceTime. And that, I wasn't even yeah. in a part of that conversation. Yeah. She was just like, oh, hey, Chris, by the way, that would make a really cool drum and bass God, intro. She had a little genius, that girl. Little genius. Yeah, 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 little genius yeah, Dana. Yeah. yeah, and um, and yeah, so then it, that's kind of where, that's where that whole thing came from. Um, and I guess Bass Coast has been quite, quite a thing because what was it? It was January 14th. So Henry mm-hmm. C and I for years. Mm-hmm. We always knew that at some point we would get into the studio together. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just, it was kind of like divine timing where on January 14th, a few days before, we were just like, this is the day, we're both free, let's fucking do this, mm-hmm. you know, like let's actually sit down, we'll meet up, and let's see what we can That's this year, right? Mm-hmm. That was yeah. of this, yes, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, boom, I go to his house, it's, I believe it was a snowy day, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're sitting inside. And uh, we're just diving into tunes. And very quickly, we realize that we have a synergy going. Mm-hmm. That sometimes you can go in the studio with someone yeah. and it just doesn't hit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Energetically, whatever it is, something about it, it just doesn't hit. But with Henry and I, it was just like, 
we were down to fucking do whatever. Mm -hmm. And we were down to just like take totes and like get creative. <laughs> and it seems like every bit of input that I had or that he had, we'd be like, yeah, that's sick. Yeah. And then, so we create four tunes together over the next few months, mm -hmm. tunes that we really, really love and really mm -hmm. like. Um, and then he started playing them out and that was a huge moment at Gorgamish to, uh, to see it all kind of like come together and then see people dancing to it. And I was like, what the fuck is life? Like you just can mm -hmm. create with people you love mm -hmm. to then have, make people have an experience in a nightclub in a forest at a festival mm -hmm. that is giving them a little escape from whatever else they got going on in life mm -hmm. for that brief moment of time. And it's just, there's something so beautiful for us. A shout out Henry C. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it's just something else to like create this music and then, um, have my now partner get involved with that. Sh big shout out to Alicia. Mm -hmm. Um, she's a vocalist on a few of those songs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so to like have to just be like the three, me, me, Henry and Alicia, like taking tokes and whether Alicia was working on her paintings or whatever it was, um, we looked at her as like our personal sample maker, mm -hmm. right? Our personal vocalist. Mm -hmm. We adore her very much. So it's like whenever we'd be creating music, we'd hear things in our head and then like words. Yeah. And then we'd be like, Leech, all right, get yeah. on the microphone. Like, yeah. here you go. And she just nailed it. She was yeah. so nervous going into it, but she, the nervousness and the awkwardness of it is what made it what it was. Because mm -hmm. she was like, authentic yeah. Organic. yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. And that's our first time doing anything voice. like that, I assume. First time. Yeah, yeah. And she, Beautiful. she was like, she was like, don't listen to this. Like, don't do it because she spoke it in this like funny yeah. accent yeah. voice. Like yeah. maybe when you were a kid, you would do, yeah. if you're really nervous, you would like just say it in a weird ass voice. Uh -huh. yeah. We dropped it into her song lined it out and it yeah. just hits so yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> it just hits so well. And I think that that gave her a lot of faith too yeah. uh, in creatively because yeah. I've ever heard to see people like Gorgamish for the first time yeah. like dance and she hears her voice through the speakers. It was just so the, surreal. The collaborative yeah. creativeness amongst music and art and everything, it blows my mind. Yeah. yeah it it really is crazy. Really creating art on your own is something but creating art the aha moment for me with photography was when I started working with people. Yeah. Mm. And that was the aha moment. I was like, yes. Oh Jesus. Yep. Like we can like, you know, when you're doing something, you're just like putting in work, putting in work. But if you yeah. got, you, you put in work and then somebody else yeah. it's like, Dude. it can explode. Yeah. The ways that collective energies yeah. just make something Literally. else. Yeah. yeah. Cause yeah. It, it, if you think about it, we have pretty much, you can think of infinite mm -hmm. things, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like, what happens when you take your own mind capable mm -hmm. of imagining anything creatively mm -hmm. and then morph that plus one, yeah. another mm -hmm. mind that can imagine an infinite amount of things? What do you get? Well, I think what you get is like, not just double the amount of, it's, I think it's, it's like, it's, it's such, it's way exponential. It's such yeah. an exponential thing. And yeah. that's why I've like, I love making music by myself, but one of my newfound favorite things to do is definitely to make music sitting in with another human being yeah. that you mm -hmm. enjoys presence that you just enjoy kind of getting creative with and seeing yeah. what happens and seeing what comes out. Yeah. yeah. And letting go of that process too. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, it, yeah. Not yeah. sitting in the studio. Okay. Leech, yeah. I need to do this, this, yeah. this. Yeah, I need right. you to sound like this. Yeah. 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 Being so strict that, and so military. Yeah. 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 I, think, I think constraints are the and death to creativity. I feel like that's a, definitely like a theme, a recurring theme for you is you let go of all the rules. Yeah. Totally. Totally. You don't like to yeah. be encapsulated yes. by yeah. rules Box. and just and let say, things. And say yes to everything. Yeah. That's the key too. Say yes and embrace it and put in the hard work yes it's go a long way yeah the hard work definitely pays off yeah. you know like and when i when i say hard work pays off at this moment in my career i mean like listening back to my creations and mm -hmm. then listening to my creations that i was making in 2011 2012 i just i give myself a big pat on the back you know yeah. Crazy. so wow this Beautiful. is nuts yeah. you guys i mean let's wrap yeah, yeah. yeah. i just want yeah. to say like you know we you had your premiere last what thursday yeah. mm -hmm. so that's what's kind of gave me the idea to bring you on this week yes. for the recap of what that was like so just give us like a general like a, i'll give you my briefing okay. i've heard i've heard a couple of songs already before that but i didn't hear the whole thing until that moment and every single song is is just it's its own thing it's immaculate and as a whole thing it all goes together so well and honestly like fuck so good, Chris. Like, thank you, amazing. Like, this needs to be out there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, this yeah. needs to be out there, as well as all your other shit. You got to put all your other shit. <laughs> yeah, out there. I will, I will, I will. Like for yeah, fuck's sake. There's a huge list yeah. that so all many of good us songs. Yeah, so yeah, many yeah. Good yeah. We, we talk about Gooey. Yeah. Gooey's not even the best one. It's just no. the funny. Fu it's just yeah, it funny. funny. That's all that's going to grab your attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Work is for just sure. It's it's almost a meme at this point. You know, totally, totally, dude. Yeah, it's a local, a local meme for sure. So it's you know, and and I remember. 
you know, we were, we were listening to it together. Uh, we were standing at the back of the room. And one of the things I was talking to you about was the genre of drum and bass, yeah. you know, and you brought it up a little bit already when yeah. you're talking about like the masculine and feminine. And I, and I was like, the drum and bass is, is such a, it's a genre. It's a, it's a genre of electronic music that is all about dichotomy. You know, mm. it's, it's, it does a lot of things at the same time. It can mm -hmm. be, it's fast and yes. it's slow at yeah. the same time, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and, and right. you can listen to, dark. well, the way that you can listen, you can listen to the same song and dance to it many different ways. Mm -hmm. Cause you just need to, you just pick the part of the song that you want to isolate and you could just, that could be the slow, That's that could be fast, many layers. you know, and yeah. it's, and it's, and like you said, you know, the, the beat can be so tight and masculine and, and structured and almost mathematical. And then at the same time, the way you produce your songs had a lot of that ethereal, yes. emotional yes. slowness to it, 100%. you know, it was, but not slow. Like, I'm not saying it's slow, but it's not like frenetic, like it'd be like drum and bass can be is very, mm -hmm. can be very frenetic and high energy, which is great. Like it's, it is what it is, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, but it, like that, the genre can be so many things simultaneously mm -hmm. in one song. You can be fast and slow and masculine and, and feminine, feminine and, yeah. and rough and soft yeah, and, gooey. and, and loud and quiet <laughs> all at the same time, yeah. yes. you know, in the same song. And it's just, it's, yeah. I mean, I don't listen to drum and bass a lot, but I do have appreciation for it. Mm -hmm. Um, and you kind of really encapsulated all of that in the tracks that you built. And, you know, you know, I, I've thought about the genre like that before, but I think it's the first time I really, it really like resonated for me that I could just say that to somebody and it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I love so. to hear that. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. I, yeah. I, I, I love that, that it was listening to the EP in that moment that kind of mm -hmm. maybe expanded the, your I had all these ideas already day. yeah but mm -hmm. it just made so much sense to put them all together yes in that moment to tell you that yes for whatever reason yeah. I was compelled to Different. but but I think the, the the music that you put out really personified it I think is what it yeah. was is mm -hmm. that it could be so many things at the same at time, the same time. Yes. Yeah. and and it's and, and I'm not saying that as a genre I mean the specific song yes yes from that yes. genre yeah. but it is the genre that does mm -hmm. that it falls does. under yeah. that which yeah. is why yeah. I think yeah. you really resonated with it is because it you have all this musical uh experience yes mm -hmm. and you have like everything from hip-hop to yeah. progressive yeah. to house yeah. to bounce to yeah to the dub stuff we were talking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. And, and you can yeah. put a lot of those elements all together in this one genre yeah. in a way that is so cohesive. Dude. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah, I have yeah, nothing just, to add except to yeah. agree. That is, yeah. yeah I, it's true. really, really nice to hear that because, mm -hmm. um, as musicians, as an artist, like you can really be critical about yourself mm -hmm. and really sometimes question mm -hmm. of, you know, you can question what you're creating. Is it cool? Is it fun? Is it what you're trying to convey? Uh, and it goes back to what I was saying before about just like with the drum bass project, finally feeling like I was able to mm -hmm. have the most direct translation of what I heard in my head and the mm -hmm. emotion that hurt, felt in my heart. Mm -hmm. And then what was in front of me and what I was listening to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I appreciate you saying that because that was a really good way to explain kind of, mm -hmm. uh, it all. Yeah. 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 And then, yeah. and then you played the set at like, how, how, how did the experience of the release first of all go for you? Cause you, you're in a room with, mm -hmm. I think maybe 20, 30 of your friends. Yeah. People that are important to you yeah. at this time in your journey. Yes. And having them all be there for that. What is that like? It is the <laughs> most beautiful thing that mm -hmm. I've ever experienced. Mm -hmm. Because first off, to put it simply, um, if I, you know, when I was living in Harrison, mm -hmm. like yelled downstairs and be like, hey mom, come listen to this. And she was yeah. like, oh, I love that. Yeah. That feeling to me, yeah. one of my favorite things. To yeah. share it with a friend, one of my favorite things. Yeah. To take all of those friends, put them in the same room. And your parents were there. Yeah, shout, shout out, out parents, yeah. yeah. To like take that. the parents, take yeah. all of the friends, and all the people. And they can see all the people that, that aren't you. Yes appreciate it yes because like, yes. then they hear it and they're like oh it's good yeah like, maybe yeah. we just like it because it's our son because yeah. it's our yeah. son yeah. yeah so i think maybe it had yeah. a little breaking of uh yeah. breaking of effect there um yeah. but it, it really was one of the most beautiful nights of my mm -hmm. life because to 
get to play it live, all these tunes. I was thinking about it afterwards. I was like, all the tunes I played, because it was 60 minutes of original. So all those yeah, tunes so, collectively. Yeah, this is moving into Northern House now. Yeah, and yeah, having everybody there. All those tunes collectively yeah. that I played at Northern House, yeah. that's hundreds and hundreds of hours yeah. of sitting alone at my desk yeah. with my headphones on, yeah. being like, does this sound cool? Nah, does this sound cool? <laughs> reworking yeah. things and so it was just a beautiful experience mm-hmm. to not only have everybody there but to also have all my music there and then to be able to play it for all the friends mm-hmm. for the family um easy easy to say one of the best nights of mm-hmm. my life one of the most beautiful nights of my life for sure yeah. oh, um and, and just to see the reactions and to see the pe- i was i was blown away i had no idea that, that many people would show up and yeah it's like every time i looked up from the mixer I would see a new set of eyes yeah. and I was like, whoa, you're here? Like, yeah. thank you for yeah. coming. Like, ah, yeah. oh, man, even thinking about it now, I got goosebumps. Just yeah. like, ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, so much fun. And that's why we so do it. That's yeah. why we do it. That's, yeah. why, that's do why, it, yeah. why we do it, you guys. Okay, so what kind of time yeah. are we looking at? This yeah. is nuts. Yeah. I think that's a great spot to end it on. Yeah. I mean, I, I did yeah. want to talk about the new EP more, but I think mm-hmm. what we should do okay. is you're about to release this all officially yeah. when? November 17th. November 17th. Yeah. So you're going to release it on November 17th. Highly recommend, even if you don't like drum and bass, check it out. Please check it out. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank it's you. it's Absolutely. extremely high quality work. He, this, is, this is the last time you're going to see Chris in Vancouver. The international stage is going to take him away from us because <laughs> it's that good. He will Thank disappear yet again, yeah. but reemerge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, yeah. Big We're all loose. Yeah. yeah. So, nah, you. so you, you know, I could easily just on this work alone, mm-hmm. you're going to be playing at Bass Coast and Shambhala. Oh, uh, on this work alone, thank you. You know, I, I, I 100% go, see that. Man. So mm-hmm. let's um, go. And if they don't want you, then they don't deserve you. <laughs> honestly, because <laughs> that stuff, go. that stuff is higher quality than anything out there right now. Mm. Thank you. It's, and I'm not saying that as a friend. Oh, I'm saying know, that as a critic. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. you know, yes. Thank you. You, you know, can just it's tell. yeah. Bottom you know, heart, and, yes. and I hope for me, yeah. as your brother. Yes. <laughs> You throw in gooey in one of those sets. Oh, you know just, I you will. gotta just you throw know in one of those sets. Will, yeah. Ooh, you Ooh. know I will. I cannot Please. wait. Yeah. The world I is cannot, it, yeah. it, it yeah. is. Yeah, it I cannot really wait. Is. I think I might I might inject it into a little TikTok soon, so we'll see. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what's happening. Yeah. Excited. Look out for that. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Also, the people that tuned in tonight, thank yeah. you so, so fucking much. It was great to have you here. Yeah. Uh, big shout out to you guys for having yeah. me on. Like, thank you. Thank I really you. appreciate Another it. Another amazing yeah. episode. I mean, all these episodes have been so cool. Like, having these in our archive of recordings of these, of these people's lives has just been... I don't know. It's just, I think it's just, a, it's such a gift to, to me, yeah. to yeah. you, to anybody who gets to witness them. Yes. The town in this city that, you know, you know, we get to talk to. It's fucking Unreal. It's a gift. Yeah. Yes. It's a gift. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, so pleasure. Many. Pleasure, yeah. man. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank for sure. Yeah. Thank you for being yeah. here. Thank yeah. you for tuning in. We have no time for questions. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> Let's get questions for Chris it. Corkle's uh, Instagram or whatever and yeah. just DM him. And if he Not ever sure. like, checks it, he'll reply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting better at it. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting better at it. I, it's yeah. a work in progress, yeah. but this is a finished yeah. piece and we're mm. excited to hear it. Yes. And the world is excited to hear it. Yeah. Thank you guys. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you again soon. Please yeah. subscribe to yeah. our YouTube subscribe, channel. Subscribe, like, share. Do all the things. All the things and we'll that we keep forgetting to say. Every week Ooh. for yeah. a new episode with yes. a beautiful, talented artist. Yeah. Yes. Right here. Yeah. On After Hours of Blondies. <laughs> the show on After Hours of Blondies. Let's go. Thank you so much.